uh, you and I. So we're going to start the meeting right now so that we can move it along. Okay. Um, and then we'll get the rest of the team to join us. All right. So I'd like to call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. Um, roll call Barry Woodall. Yeah. Jimmy Tarlow. Yeah. Okay, and once uh, Jerry and Jimmy, and Jimmy and Luke uh, join us, we'll, we'll add them to the roll call. Okay, so there's three of us right now. All right, so we're gonna do a review of the agenda. Uh, Mayor and Council review the agenda for the meeting, adding and or deleting topics of interest or discussion. So uh, Valerie, can you do a, a read through please? Um, sure, call the order, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, two, review of the agenda, five minutes. Um, three, mayor and council members events announcements. Number four, uh, presentation and discussion of building application for 3112 Webster Street, Mountaineer, Maryland, 20712. Five, public comment. Uh, six, second reading and adoption of ordinance number uh, 05-2023, an ordinance establishing the tax rate, adopting an annual budget and appropriating funds for fiscal, fiscal year 24, beginning July, 20, uh, July 1, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024, 20 minutes. Update and discussion of um, on 3200 Rhode Island Avenue. Um, number eight, discussion and update on Potts Hall Welcome Center, 15 minutes. New business, number nine, uh, discussion and vote on the recommendations to the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission, MNCPPC, appointments to the Mount Rainier Legacy Mixed-Use Town Center, LMUTC, 15 minutes. 10, ARPA discussion and vote, number 29, 20 minutes. Number 11, first reading of ordinance number 06-2023, budget amendment number three, 15 minutes. Uh, 12, discussion on vote on awarding the contract for the Memorial Park Streetscape Project, 15 minutes. 13, vote and approval of minutes, five minutes. Number 14, adjournment. So you guys heard a fair reading of the read through. We're going to ba um, go back right now and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Valerie, can you lead us on the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Yes, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Valerie. Council, you have heard a fair read of the agenda. Uh, please know that Luke has joined the meeting as well. Um, so we are just uh, one council member short and there, he should be coming in as well. All right, so um, you have heard the review of the agenda. Is there anything you guys would like to Delete, delete, or delete, or add. Please uh, um, let me know. I'm excited to hear from you guys. Valerie, have, good. Okay. Um, well, do we have? Um, are we talking when we talk? We're talking about 3200 Rhode Island Avenue. Or are we just talking about that, or is it somebody coming to present? Or I think I saw that they wanted to postpone again. So nobody is presenting. Uh, they did ask for the next meeting because they said they're finalizing. Um, the approval of the menace and stuff like that. So nobody's presenting. But I had a, I raised it as an agenda item after that, Mayor. Yeah, I know, but she was asking specifically what, were we having a presentation okay. as part of it? The answer is no. Sorry. So it's just okay. a discussion, uh, Valerie, nothing else. Okay, uh, Councilmember Stolfos is also has joined us. Harold, Jared, you missed it by a second. Valerie, like, you know, did uh, vice mayor duties. Wow, Jared, it's like <laughs> that. Is that I your last that. meeting? You're slagging like that? <laughs> I stepped I step right. down a little early, so. Uh, all right, that's what it was. Okay, so Council, um, Valerie, you're good with the agenda? Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, Jimmy, Jared, Luke, how are we good with the agenda? Okay, I see Luke, you said yes. Jared, uh, did I shake a pen? Jimmy, you're good? Fine. All right, so we have an approved agenda. Uh, moving on to item number three, Mayor and Council Members Events Announcement. So we're going to start with Ward 2. Uh, Valerie, Jared, Jimmy, Luke. Um, I don't have any events or announcements right this minute. I know the Mountain Near Elementary School is working on a carnival. I think, I, I'm not quite sure which day it is, but um, I can find out and get back to you on that. But that's it. Thank you. Walking to school day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Walking to school tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to be like, <laughs> okay, so once you find that, I'll, I'll go around it and get to you. All right, so uh, Jared. You're muted, Jared. Beautiful speech, but we couldn't hear you. 
Nothing to add. All right, perfect. Uh, Jimmy, look. I don't have anything. Look. You're I muted. Think- Sorry, I think Bike to Work Day is May 19th. Um, I think there is going to be a similar um, setup like we've done in the past with a with a sort of morning station at the bike co-op. Um, so if folks want to bike out to work, uh, May 19th is the day to do it. Um, there may be some swag and stuff for folks who show up. Um, and I'm not sure in the exact time. And I think probably 7.30 to 8.30 or 9 or thereabouts. Okay. Uh, double check, and if you find out by the end of the meeting, we could just add the time and put it to the agenda. It's a nine, so we still be able to do it for the next for Monday. You could announce the day and time, so it it could go into our agenda and information. Now, do you have any flyers? I think the city might have been promoting it already. But um, okay, and the other, I uh, look the tree commission event uh, for tree uh, city this past Saturday. Oh, the, we had, yeah, it was a, it was a well-attended event. Um, thanks to everyone who came. Um, Selena was there um, with the proclamation and doing some planting. Um, and uh, it was just a, just a, just a good event. Um, we planted quite a few trees in Rogers Park, which is a little sliver of park on Eastern Avenue. Um, and we hope to start engaging residents on um, uh, that park more um, so that we can take this momentum um, and come up with a better design, get some mulch, more mulch down, um, and go after some money to turn that into a, um, it might not be as usual, as, as usable a space to people, um, like the food forest, but it could be definitely a much more beautiful spot um, and a native habitat for all our bird and bug friends out there. All right. Thank you so much. Um, Melissa, can you put the bottom of the agenda where the announcements are at? So, um, thank you so much. So the walk, the walk, um, the bike, the walk, bike, and road to school is tomorrow uh, at seven a.m. My radio elementary is participating. So please be, you know, you always should be extra careful when you drive, but especially when we have a big movement of kids walking and biking and rolling to school. A lot of families did participate. So big uh, thank you to the Marine PTO and the school for doing a lot of efforts to continue being a green school. Um, so I, I think eventually they'll go back to once a month like they used to do prior to COVID. But it definitely um, it's reassuring to see that. All right. Community shredding event is May 6th from 9 to 12 uh, right here by City Hall. Please make sure you bring um, one box to be shredded. And this is something that CUNY has been asking for quite a bit of years. So we have it. Bring your boxes, please. Uh, County uh, elected council members swearing in uh, May 8th at 6.30 police in the police uh, department community room. As you guys know, we had elections yesterday. Big, 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 gigantic thank you to a board of elections who's there like before the sun comes out all the way to the last vote is count as well, who's been working with the Board of Elections. Melissa, thank you so much. Uh, Poor Melissa had a long day yesterday and she's here at the meeting, so she did ask for you guys to hurry the meeting up. Melissa, your wish might be our command this day. (laughs) Okay, all right, but so Soren is at 6.30. We'll be sharing um, the links through our calendar for you guys to join virtually. Uh, The information will be sent out to council and the and the elected officials, so Valerie won re-election, and um, Danielle um, is currently the council member elect. Big thank you to everybody that participated in the elections. Big thank you to the candidates. Um, we in this group very much know what it takes to run and the will that it takes to run. So um, we appreciate your um, your enthusiasm to run. We look forward to you guys continue to be engaged and collaborating with us. All right. So next is Youth Scholarship Deadline, May 12th at 5 p.m. We're going to be sending another round of reminders to the school. Um, the applications go to Melissa at cityclerk.mrainermd.org, or they could drop them off at uh, City Hall. So they're there. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and Melissa. We'll be happy to help. That's May 12th at 5 p.m. Open Studios Tour in the Gateway Art District is May 13th. 
multiple stores over the city and, and other cities are gonna be open. Please stop by and, and check out the great work our neighbors are doing. Bike to work day is May 19, and we'll get you guys more information about uh, the bike co-op and what time the stop is gonna be there. The recreation community is having a 5K on May 20, 7.30. Uh, the Mount Rainier Day is May 20, 11 to 5 at 1030. It's going to be the lineup for uh, the parade and usually goes from 11 to 12. Um, Officer Murphy makes sure that we are uh, on track with it. And then the performance will start at 12 o'clock right here in the City Hall. So Rhode Island will be closed and so will uh, Perry right next to um, right next to City Hall. Okay. Uh, Memorial Day, the office will be closed as May 29. Recreation Community Yard starts so June 3rd, 8 a.m. to 2. Um, and I think we're going to probably be working on the city, like doing a sign up for that. Um, and the Pride Parade is June 17. That's a couple of them. I, I think there's a couple of them in between that are, that are missing. Uh, but that more or less looks like what we have right now. Okay. So other than that, a uh, big thank you also to the Girl Scouts and Mary Lee for organizing a cleanup um, for um, Earth Day. Um, they, they, um, they were very helpful. Thank you for that. And um, uh, Valerie, thank you for cleaning up uh, the, the Nature Center yesterday. Something, something that most people didn't realize is um, when the voting was low, Valerie was out there uh, collecting um, collecting trash and cleaning the space, right? But it speaks very much of who Valerie is. So thank you so much for that. All right. Um, all right, so thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. So those are the announcements that we have right now. And if uh, guys, if you think of anything, that could be at the end of the meeting, okay? All right, so we have a presentation discussion on building application for 3112 Webster Street in Mount Rainier, Maryland, 712. The Mayor Council will discuss the building application. Um, so I, I did see you, Alma, our co-director. Um, can you like um, give us a little bit of information on, thank you so much, a little bit of information about the project and then we'll go ahead and put it on to the next, to the next person. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Thank you for um, having us here today. We are here to have a presentation um, from the owners, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Morgan, uh, for the building application for 3112 Webster Street. Um, according to the scope of work, we're looking at a second floor addition in an open deck with steps. Um, and I give the floor to Mr. Morgan, who's here. Thanks, Alma. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, hi, Council. Hi, everyone. I'm actually going to turn it over to my wife, uh, who can speak a little bit more about the project. Perfect. It's so this is Abby and James Morgan, correct? That's what I live Yes, here. yes. So, thank you. Welcome, and uh, the floor is yours. Sure. So we um, we purchased our house in 2017. It's a 600, just under 700 square foot, two-bedroom house. Uh, we were newly married with no kids, and now we have two children in under 700 square feet. Um, but we love where we live, and we love Mount Rainier. So we are um, on track to add um, a family room in the back of the house, and then, like Alma said, a second um, a second floor bedroom, bathroom, and small office space. So it's about half. It's only on one side of the house, um, and then rebuilding the deck that exists right now, it'll be up slightly larger. Um, and that's pretty much it. Cool. We've been working with Nathan Cedaroff, um, who lives on our block, and uh, we're working with uh, as our architect, and then Pete McAvoy, um, who will be our contractor. Thank you guys so much. I'm gonna put uh, the floor to word one. So Jimmy, Luke, go ahead. I have to be bad. Just good luck on your house, and you know you're doing something like a great project. And we we're happy that you've decided to live here and expand to stay here as opposed to moving. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Thanks, Jimmy. Of course. Yeah. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you so much, Luke. The floor is yours. Sure. Um, well, thanks, guys, for living here and continuing to want to live here and improve our houses. Um, it's great. Um, and there are just a few things we remind everybody who comes before us. 
Um, no construction before 8 a.m., um, no construction after 8 p.m. Um, if there is, we get calls and then we reach out to you. So please, we want less calls to us. So help us in that area. Um, also, if you have trees, you know, I'm sure Alma has told you about the tree ordinance and stuff you have to do there. Um, if there are large trees around where construction is, helpful to put, um, you know, orange um, uh, uh, fencing around it and make sure any like heavy machinery or stuff isn't isn't on top of it. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's my spiel. Thank you all. Thanks, sure. Luke. Thanks, Luke. Yep. Thank you so much. Uh, Jared Valerie. Yep. Oh, Abby and James are just, uh, you know, really happy you're in the city, really happy you're uh, able to continue staying here. And, um, you know, really, I'm excited that you're able to um, stay in the community and um, continue to continue to be here. Um, yeah, everything Luke said, I won't rehash that again. Um, those are the one thing the things that we do get calls about. So just make sure you uh, stick to those. Uh, both Nathan and Pete, as you probably know, have done lots of work in this community, are familiar with the city, yeah. with the regulations, and uh, you know you should be in good stead there. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you so much, Valerie. Thank you, this sounds great. Um, nothing more to add. My kids are making dinner in the background, so I'm mute back <laughs> You're gonna have to share it now then, Valerie. That's the rule. All right, so I will say, uh, Thank you guys. It's always exciting to see um, our families expanding and deciding to stay here. And you have picked two great persons that know the city, love the city, and they definitely know uh, the rules of the city. So <laughs> if we get a call at 7 a.m., 6 a.m., you guys will also get a call at 6 a.m. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Hard work. And We're going to be looking here through most of it. So we don't want work <laughs> happening before 8 a.m. or after 8 p.m. either. So. <laughs> Especially with little kids, I'm pretty sure you'd be like, no. <laughs> yeah. But um, other than that, um, I think you'll be fine. Alma, um, anything that we need to know? Any, um, do they need to go to the sign review board um, or we're clear with all of that? We are all clear with the permits. Um, they were approved from the county and um, they've been very helpful in assisting with providing everything that we need for the city. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. Any information you guys need, please feel free to reach out to Alma and obviously to any of us. We're, we're happy to answer questions. Okay. But um, have a good night. Okay. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank appreciate you all it. So much. Appreciate it. Bye. All right, guys. Moving on to the next item. Ooh, there you go. We have a public comment. You see, uh, okay, so let me give you the spill for public comment. The members of public are welcome to speak on items that ideally are not on the agenda. So we please ask that you please speak on items that are not on the agenda. If they're on the agenda and you cannot stay this late, this will be the place for you to speak. You got three minutes to state your piece, uh, five minutes if you represent a group. However, you have to be a member recognized uh, by the group. And also means that the other members of the group are sitting there their time so therefore they will not be able to speak all right other than that we ask for you to be courageous courageous you know kind loving um and if it has to do with any staffing please reach out to us or the city manager uh, in order to address the situation other than that uh, i'll go ahead and open the floor you have uh three minutes um let us let us know if there's anybody of the public that wishes to speak write your name last name um, block number and street on the um, on the box, on the chat box. And if you're on Facebook, just write your question and Jerry will let us know, okay? Jerry, is anybody on Facebook right now um, with any comments? All right, thank you so much. Okay. All right. So another thing that I decided to add as of like a few meetings back was da Danielle had a comment to make. I, I think. understand that. Jimmy, can you let well, me you, finish, please? No, well, you, you, it looked like you were moving on. Yeah. I'm not. I, I believe, okay. At least would like to see the floor. The other thing I, I asked last meeting was that if you just need to read the comment, write the word read so that way I don't call upon you. And if you do that, it'll make life a little bit easier for us because sometimes we wait around for for us, you know, for you to come on, online. Okay. 
So moving that from that explanation, we'll go ahead and add it. Um, Melissa, can you go ahead and add that to the agenda moving on? So that way um, I remember to read it. Okay. All right. So Danielle Shep, uh, Danielle Shep. Sorry, Danielle. Danielle Carr, 3200 Shepherd Recreation Community Yellowstone Information. Go ahead, Danielle. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to uh, make sure that everybody knows that if they're interested in be, um, being a part of the Recreation Community Annual Community Yard Sale, um, to send their name, their address, and contact information to Recreation Committee at Mount Rainier MD.org. That's M O U N T R A I N I E R M D dot org. Thank you. Okay. Anybody? Um, anybody else? Uh, we have. Um, all right. My apology. Let me look. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. We have a couple of messages on the chat. Um, so. This is this is where it comes about. Uh, we're gonna maybe start typing a message on the chat, but it wouldn't really matter if you're joining late because you won't be able to see it. Um, we have a message from Catherine Killing that said, "Well, the, this sounds like a great project." Mona Raham, glad you're staying. Love this little city. Sounds like it's going to be a lovely addition. Elizabeth Moore, do you have an architecture elevation you can share with the proposed architecture design? Um, then you have Ashley. We're a nice couple. Glad they're staying and nice. They are using my Rainier architect. Um, why is it relevant? Curious as, okay, there's a lot of back and forth between the communities. So unless you guys put name, address, and block number, I don't think I need to be reading side conversations. <laughs> okay, I, I, I love you guys dearly, but if not, be here the whole day. All right, Melissa, can you put on, thank you, Melissa. You're on mute. Okay, can you guys mute the, um, the mics? Okay, second reading and adoption orange 05 2023, an orange establishing the tax rate, adopting an annual budget, and appropriating funds for the fiscal year FY24, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30, 2024. That's a 20 minute um, discussion. The American Council will have a second reading of the adoption or an orange. So, um, Ron Wilson, can you put on the screen any changes that have taken place since the last time we review um, we review the budget? Thank you so much. And just to um, keep everybody on the same page, uh, the budget could be found on MontRainierMD.org. All right, so this is the like the latest version. So basically, every time we make any change on the proposed budget, um, we have had our financial consultant and city manager um, put this document together, and we review what changes have been made. So they're right here up front, so that way you know um, where it's coming from. The line item, uh, the previous, the first, second, third, four review, and any name change and any side note that. Um, that how do you call it? Um, we have added. All right. So there were quite a few things that um, that were that were changed um, on it, which is part of the normal process. They present a budget, and um, we go through it. All right. So uh, Ron Wilson, I'm gonna go ahead and see you the floor, and this is like the updates uh, to the budget from uh, the last meeting. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, first line item 4214, which is rent stabilization revenue. After discussion in the work session, uh, it was decided to reduce that revenue item by $10,000. Uh, so the new number is $57,812.50. In the expense, expense section, uh, first off line item 5,000 employee bonus. Again, after discussion in the work session, uh, it was decided to uh, to give each non-FOP city attorney uh, a one-time bonus of $1,415. And the total cost for that um, is $45,280. And that is the net change in that line item. All right, next for expenses, um, line item 5520 and 5521, 
uh, have been reduced from the 24 budget because we decided to accelerate those payments into fiscal 23. So the, the interest line item is uh, being reduced by 135. The principal line item is being uh, reduced by $6,558. Going down to line item 5523 and 5524, these are being reduced for the same reason. Uh, interest uh, is being reduced by $425. The principal is being reduced by $21,005. Uh, going down further, line items 5522 and 5525, again, for the same reason, uh, the interest is being reduced by $378. And the principal is being reduced by $16,779. And then finally, uh, in the contingency line, 5598, we are reducing that by 10,000 uh, as a consequence of reducing the rent stabilization by 10,000. So all of those changes net to zero, uh, and we have a balanced proposed budget. Thank you so much, Ron. Can you do me a favor when it comes to this? Can you make a side note so we could see it for the budget itself to let them know this is going to what exactly that this number is going to look? Because next year, when they, when some of these things like move up again, I want to make sure that the community knows, you know, that way they don't see like it's a big jump, right? Okay. Or if you just read it per se like that, they might think that we're cutting the police budget, but in reality, you know, you know, we're, we're, um, we're, we're covering some things from this budget for FY23 to like give room for on the other side. Okay. So yes, just that, so that would make our job a little bit easier for next year. Yep, um, so um, is there any more or this one, is it only one page? This is I it. don't want to cut it off. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can right. slide down a little bit so that you can see that the net change is zero. Oh, thank you. That, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Council, I'm going to open up the floor to you guys to discuss this document. If you have nothing to say, I'm going to open the floor up for um, after this for the community. And then I'm going to, um, so you guys know the sequence, right? If there's anything you need regarding this budget or any document, because I have two questions. Um, one, and number two, the next phase would be like call for a for a vote, open it to discussion so that we could discuss if there's anything else you guys need to add. And then for I'm gonna call for a verbal vote. Okay. So I need to fist, I need you guys to like physically say your vote. I mean verbally say your vote. Okay. So um do you guys have anything to um add? I'm gonna start backwards because I did did word to um the other time around. So I'm gonna go Valerie, Jared, uh, Jimmy, Luke. Um, I think I'm pretty good with this. Um, so thank you. Jared. Oops, I'm good. Thank you. Jimmy. I'm fine. Luke. Um, I'm good. I'm a little concerned about the bike co-op piece. Um, Kamali sent us uh, the email that they had sent to us for some of the things they're looking for from that $8,000 that got allocated. So I think maybe, I forget if we were going to put that into ARPA or yes. not. Yes. Okay. That was the then, idea, we're all, ARPA. then we're all, then we're all good. Then I am good. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to have the discussion. Um, the city manager did make a recommendation to figure out what it looked like. So but the idea was to move it into ARPA. Okay, uh, so I I needed to, so one, thank you for doing this document. I, I think that this definitely line streams it for all of us, right? Um, what the budget is and for the community to easily read it. I, I know that, so I, pre, I appreciate the, the thought into, into making sure this happens, okay? Um, in saying that there was two things and I apologize, I couldn't find it it may be got name under something else. I did propose a teacher appreciation, um, rec a teacher recognition. Um, and I think I asked for, I think it's 1,200, 1,500. I wasn't sure if it was added to the budget. 
Can you let me know if it's here and I that I just missed it? Uh, Kamali, you know, Iran? Yeah, I'm I, sorry, Mayor. Mayor, yeah. could you repeat your question again? Just <laughs> one of you, I hear both of you are talking. Kamali asked me to repeat the question, and Ron Wilson, you asked me what? No, I was just going to say that I I don't recall where it is offhand. Um, that particular item goes back several versions, and, and and I apologize that I just don't remember where it is. Okay, but you guys do remember that I wanted to recognize our teachers in our community that, that work with our kids, and it was, it's it's not a it's not a gigantic thing, but at least some uh, public recognition, is basically a certificate, and um, and you know a gift card in behalf of the city, and the students get to um, get to get to vote on teacher of the month. Kind okay, of Mayor, Mayor, I did yes. find it. Um, Thank you. It, it, it is line 5550. Okay. It's in the community activities section, uh, and it is budgeted for $1,000. I need $200 more. So it's like, um, actually, no, because the teachers are out during the summer. We're good. All right. Perfect. Okay. I just remember why. My, there, there's, there's information to my madness. All right. Thank you so much, Ron. The other thing I need to, I need you guys to do, and please hear me out before you guys like, you know, run a car over me. Um, the Currently the budget says specifically when we're going to release the money for the gateway. Um, I say I would like for us to add the word proposed to it because for two reasons. One, we need to make sure that the documentation is given to us before the money is released. And also gives the flexibility if the city manager, you know, when they train this report to so the city manager, right? If if it's not followed through, um, it's not telling the staff to release it, but it's the proposed day of to be released. So if we could just add the word proposed to it, um, I'll be fine moving forward from that line item. Yes, that, that's easy enough to do. It's in, yeah. it's in a budget just uh, probably the money that Deciding when it's going to be used is up to the council. Um, the I mean, budget. We're, we're, we're just. We're just. Some... Let me. Let me just finish my sentence mm -hmm. for a second. Uh, and I apologize for interrupting you before. Uh, just that we're we're putting aside the money. You know how it's going to be used and when it's going to be used is kind of you know up to the you know the the council the city manager to decide when it's going to be used. So I'm not sure we need the language, but you know. A hundred percent, Jimmy. But right now, it currently states that in June we'll be giving the first fifty thousand dollars, and I don't want to tie the city manager if documents are not signed and it's ready to go. But currently, it, it reads like the first amount will be given out in June. That's the only reason. In July, sorry. That's that's in the budget. Yep, that's in the description line item. Okay. So that's what I said. We could put proposed. It's not going to change anything, but proposed so that way. Yeah. We are aware that this is like, and you're 100% right, Jimmy. At the end of the day, we decide like, you know, if uh, Kamali comes in and says like, this is documents that are needed, um, you know, and it hasn't, and the documents have been given, you know, that money doesn't need to be released. So that's what we're going to be making sure that they do everything they need to do and they they abide by um, the things that we're asking them to do. All right. And that's a different discussion we're having. I just wanted to make sure that I don't tie the hands of the city manager and finance when it comes to specifically giving them a month okay um all right so yes valerie um i'm okay with that um i do um i know that we're going to be potentially doing like an mou between the three cities um with intention i would like to be included in those meetings thank you yeah it, well i was hoping that three council members that were part of the gateway were part of it so um we haven't sit down because yesterday was the election for mayor robinson and mayor Tremio lopez um, they both won their re-election, and so was for Marcus as well, who is the gateway um, liaison for Brentwood. So I think everybody basically put a hold until like the elections finish in order to make sure that things will move um, move forward. And that's realistic for all of us, right? Um, I know the 34th Street uh, talks as well. Like we put a little bit of a talk that was in front of Thomas Stone for the same reason, um, you know, and we wanted to make sure that their team was selected uh, before we could move forward. All right. So the mayors are going to do what the mayors usually do, but you know, you guys are representatives for the city. <laughs> Let's remember that for the city so that we could have that discussion. But 
we'll start working on some of the things. Um, you know, I'll talk to them to figure out what what it looks like for them when they have time. But I'm gonna try to try to pull it in um, in May as much as I can, so we could have like clearly like for for June. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Um, all right. So anything, this document alone, we're good, right? Anybody from the public? All right. So the next, that's what I wanted to break it down, what the next steps are so that we knew what it looked like. All right. So moving on to the, to the next section of this same, can I call a vote? Can you put the agenda, Melissa? So I will ask you guys to put a motion to, I mean, I could do the motion, but um, the motion to approve the budget as amended. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, so it's been a motion on the floor to amend, uh, to approve the budget as amended. This is the FY24 budget. It's probably moved and second. I'm going to open it up for discussion. Do you guys have anything else you would like to discuss um, regarding the budget as a whole document. Okay, so I'm gonna go to War One since I went to War Two originally. Jimmy, Luke, uh, Valerie, and Jared. I'm good. Luke. I just want to thank you guys um, for for the work putting into this budget. Kamali, Ron, you did a lot of work. I know we had a lot of questions and asks of you guys, and so I just appreciate that. Um, to my colleagues, I just thank you guys for coming together and passing a budget. I think there's a lot of good stuff in here. Um, you know, we didn't get everything that each of us may have wanted, but I think we got most of what we each wanted. And I think that's a good sign of the consensus that's in the city. And I just appreciate y'all working together and, and getting something done here for everyone. So thank you. Thank you so much, Luke. Uh, Jarrett, Valerie? Yep. No, I just want to echo thanks for all the work you've done on this. Um, I know it's been a long slog. I, you know, it's my <laughs> second year going, um, or really, I guess almost third year going through this. Um, and I appreciate this process got a lot, lot smoother. I appreciate the um, work you put into it, the um, the background and um, all the effort you put into, you know, the changes and tweaks and everything that we've made. So uh, thank you again. Um, Valerie? Yeah, I'm going to echo um, everybody else's thanks. Um, I know it's been a lot of work, and I am really very excited. I'm very tired right now, but I am really very excited to go out and leverage all the tax dollars that we're going to put into this and get some changes made so that we have a better um, city of Mount Rainier going forward. So thank you. Thank you to everybody who participated, and I look forward to working with you. So uh, thank you, Council. So um, Ron, Kamali, thank you guys so much. Um, I know your whole team has been working behind back, Natalie, as well from finance. I know Melissa has been working on this. Basically, every single director has put their hands in like proposals for, for the budget as well. So, um, you know, Chief, Alma, Rocio, um, Ron, thank you guys so much for your work on this. Um, Melissa, I, I named you twice. That's because you're clerk and director of administrative services as well. So thank you for doing this. Um, I am gonna do one ask for next year and we might have to start working on the budget now that we have our audits in control and everything else. We need to start working on a five-year projected budget to make sure we're making decisions. As I've asked you guys before, we could make the decisions in long-term and not just in a bubble for a year. This will definitely allow for us to be able to figure out like if we purchase a card today, what it will look like in the next five years as we pay it off. If it looks like on projects that are going to be multiple years, what are we aiming at? Mm -hmm. But it'll give us a more of a sense of what it looked like. So we definitely are going to have to um, start working on the process, but that's something I think that is very important. Um, most of the cities that are very successful, especially on saving and projecting, do have a five-year plan. And I think that now that we managed to, to get our audits in order and we're going to aim at getting this one like completed, like, you know, for the first time on time, right? I think it's a good timing for us to now do the five-year projected one. This doesn't mean to tie us to like five years, we can never move one penny because every year we have to vote on the budget, but it projects what the next five years look like. Like I said, so if we have um, an investment on a property or like, you know, work, let's say I'm pothole and it's going to take more than two years, you will see it on the, on the, on the, not just the five before, like we've seen, so it's better for us to project where we're going. 
but also in the future and figure out where we're at. So that will help our team and it'll help us and the community itself to figure out what else can we do. Okay, so um, I'll work with you guys on, on it as well, but um, I look forward to to having that. But I'll say thank you guys for the patience, you know, for sometimes not understanding my vision or our vision and still being patient and delivering uh, the work that was done. Okay, all right, so. Seeing that there's no discussion, I see nothing else anywhere else. Nothing on Facebook, right, Jared? Jer Jared with an ED. All right, nothing on the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and move to a verbal vote. So I'm going to call your name and, and tell me where you're at. Okay. Uh, Jimmy? Aye. Luke? Aye. Jared? Aye. Valerie? Yes. She just say yes. I. Okay, so the I, I. carry it. The I slash yes. Carry it. Um, so it's five zero zero zero. Thank you guys also, colleagues, for getting this done. And I think it's a good representative budget, you know. And thank God for ARPA. Um, okay, so we um we had the first reading April 11 and our second reading. Um, at least approval of the budget. So now we're going to go. So I want to make sure it's a verbal agreement. Now we're going to go through the ordinance and I'm going to ask you guys to vote and adopting the ordinance. Okay. As fun as it is. All right. So seeing <laughs> Vice Mayor that you were like, you took a break this uh, agenda. Um, I need you to please help me read the ordinance 05-2023 yep. introducing introduced by Mayor and City Council. <laughs> In our establishing the tax rate, adopting an annual budget and appropriating funds for the fiscal year FY24, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June, June 30, 2024. So, um, Jared, Melissa, yep. how many pages is this document? Is it like two or three pages? Okay. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> All right. So, in saying that, um, I let you guys know we already had the first reading. So this is basically I, I cut off some of the some of the other ones, Jared. So, um, so Jared will go ahead and read. Well, so according to section six dash two or three, you might as well read it all. We're gonna have a full second reading, and once we vote, the budget has approved um, with the amendments made. Okay? okay, since the last since the first reading on on April 11. All right, go ahead. All right, City of Mount Rainier, Maryland, Ordinance Number 5-2023, introduced by Mayor and City Council. An ordinance establishing the tax rate, adopting an annual budget, and appropriated funds for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. Whereas, comma, in accordance with the Section 6-303 of the Tax Property Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland by July 15th of each year, the Council of the City of Mount Rainier shall set the tax rate for the next fiscal year on all assessments of property subject to municipal corporation property tax. And whereas a public hearing must be held prior to the establishment of the municipal corporation tax rate, if the new tax rate will exceed the constant yield tax rate as calculated by the State of Maryland Department of Assessments and Taxation, and whereas the proposed tax rate for fiscal year 2024 will exceed the blended constant yield tax rate of 76, um, sorry, 76.3 cents per $100 of assessed valuation. And whereas pursuant to the City of Mount Rainier Charter Section 702.A, the city manager submitted a recommended budget for fiscal year 2024 to the council for its review and consideration. And whereas the budget provides a complete financial plan for fiscal year 2024 and contains estimates of anticipated revenue and proposed expenditures for the upcoming fiscal year, and whereas the City of Mount Rainier Charter Section 702B requires the council to conduct a public hearing on the proposed budget prior to the adoption of the budget, and whereas after giving public notice, the council held a public hearing on the constant yield tax rate and to receive comments on the proposed fiscal year 2024 budget and tax on March 25th, 2023, and whereas after considering the recommended fiscal year 2024 budget submitted by the city manager, the comments that were made at the public hearing on the budget and tax rate, the council adopts the budget and tax rates as set forth in this ordinance. Now, therefore, be it ordained by this council of the city of Mount Rainier, Maryland, um, this day as follows, section one, tax rate real property. 
The tax rate for all single family residential real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 75 cents for $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. The tax rate for all townhouse residential real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 75 cents per $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. The tax rate for all multifamily residential real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 86 cents per $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. The tax rate for all commercial real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 79 cents per $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. The tax rate for all industrial real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 79 cents per $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. The tax rate for all vacant developed real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be $2.50 per $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. Section two, tax rates, business personal property. The tax rate for all business personal property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 99 cents per $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. Section three, tax rate, operating property of railroads and public utilities. The tax rate for all operating property of railroads and public utilities subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be $2.75 per $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. Section four, general fund revenues. The following amounts shall be adopted and appropriated as the general fund budget for all revenue for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. Tax revenue, $6,227,902.79. Licenses and permit, $727,004.50. Intergovernmental revenue, intergovernment revenue, sorry, $541,954.44. Charges for services, $24,500. Fines and forfeitures, $879,000. Miscellaneous, $120,600. Grants, $5,146,063. Total budget revenue, $13,666,024.73. Section five, general fund expenditure categories. The following amounts shall be adopted and appropriated as the general fund budget for all expenditure categories for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. Wages and leave pay, $3,352,556.27. Employee benefits and services. $1,897,323.07. Materials and supplies, $276,200. Repairs and maintenance, $140,000. Professional services, $822,250. Other services and charges, $392,302.39. Community activities, $280,000. Infrastructure and capital maintenance, Maintenance, uh, $776,750. Capital outlay, capital project, $257,000. Debt service, debt services, sorry, $326,580. Sorry, $326,580. Grant expense, $5,146,063. Total budgeted expenditures, $13,667,024.73. Section six, general fund expenditure categories by department. The following amounts shall be adopted and appropriated as the general fund budget for all expenditure categories by department for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. City governance, $78,200. City hall, $5,711,128.99. Administrative services department, $693,000. $863.59. Code Compliance Department, $449,213.37.
Economic Development Department, $356,083.63. Police Department, $3,769,931.40. Public Works Department, $2,239,719.70. Debt Services, $326,580. Contingency, $42,298.03. Total budget department expenditures, $13,667,024.73. Total full-time equivalent employees, FTEs for each department are as follows. Um, City Hall, uh, sorry, uh, I'm trying to think how we read this. But, um, you want me to just read the budget for FY24? Yeah, yeah just for Budget for FY24, City Hall. One and the other, go ahead. Yeah, three for, um, budgeted for FY24, three. Uh, FTEs, administrative services, five FTEs, code compliance, four FTEs, economic development, one FTE, police department, 23 FTEs, public works, 10 FTEs, total budgeted FTEs, 46. Uh, and just a point of information, if you notice, uh, they have not changed. They're proposing the same amount of staff for, for same as last year. Correct, Molly? Yes, Mayor. All right, perfect. Okay. We're using the same number of the full-time employees. Thank you. All right, Jerry, I'll do the last part. I, I heard you loud and clear from last time. <laughs> when you say I, Selena Benitez. <laughs> okay, this ordinance is adopted by the city council, the city of Mount Rainier. This, um, we today, day of 2023, as effective July 1st century. So, what is today's day, Melissa? May 2nd. May 2nd. All right. Go ahead. All right, Council. So you have heard a fair reading of Ordinance 05 2023. And you're establishing the tax rate, adopting an annual budget. And appropriating funds for fiscal year 24 beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending July 30, 2023. Um, can somebody make a motion to adopt as amended? As presented from the first reading. Move to adopt ordinance number 05, 2023. Okay. With the, with the, with the amended changes from the first reading. Do you accept that edit? Yeah, we didn't amend it tonight, right? This is. But from the first reading, it was amended. Right, but you wouldn't say as amended because the motion, the ordinance in front of us hasn't been amended. So you just say, move to adopt ordinance number 05 2023. I mean, you could clarify it. I mean, usually we'll, we'll go because there were a lot of changes in between, including the ones from the last meeting to this one. Okay. So you have an orange in front of you. Is there any seconds? Second. Second. All right. Um, Valerie? Aye. Jimmy? Aye. Jared? Aye. Luke? Aye. All right. So um, the ordinance 05 323 has been adopted um, and has been adopted. All right. Okay, moving on to the next item. All right, we have, um, can I ask a question? Do we have um, any members that are being appointed to the MUTC here tonight? I think Samantha, is that Samantha K in the chat? So can I ask us to like pause? The, yeah. the update on 3200 so we could like we could appoint them because I kind of feel bad keeping them here a little longer than we need to. <laughs> we guys are open to that amendment to the agenda. That's fine. Good. Yes. Jerry? Yeah, I'm 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 not sure if she's if she said she might come and I think that is her, but I'm not sure. Samantha, is that you? Yeah, she's might be stepped away from her computer right now. All right. So well, if any reasons, because usually we do we do appointments as earliest in the agenda, so we could move people um, out. Um, all right. So moving on to item number seven, um, update discussion on 3200 Island Avenue. 
Okay, the floor um, is yours, Jimmy. You added this to the agenda. Um, um, do you we were need supposed uh, to have anybody a... to give us an update from the staff? Well, I think we saw the most recent email, which came that the uh, the owner of the property said he could not make a presentation today and asked to be uh, at the next uh, meeting. Uh, I guess I'm raising, uh, it's my last meeting, the fact that that we've been holding off, I think some way, on, you know, the vacant property tax, you know, and it's really like other people have to pay it, but yet, you know, we've been holding this off and it's been a long time now. And uh, I think, you know, we should move ahead in doing that, whatever has to be done. We could always use it as a, a carrot to say that if, you know, if, when he breaks ground, we can make a credit against the amount. Oh. But I think it's unfair for us just not to to move ahead with the with all the fines and limitations. I think we've been holding them off <laughs> some of the activity. And maybe either Alma um, or Mr. Kamalik can say, oh. but that you know, they should let me finish it. That they maybe could uh you know move ahead with with whatever the process has to be done, because this is not really acceptable, the fact that they're holding on. So Jimmy, to clarify, they're not holding on. They have not just not, they have, um, the the address has been in Kamali, correct me if I'm wrong, in AMA. They have not been holding on. They're in the $2.50 per 100 square footage assets list. So the county takes a process. So it's not like we could put them today and they get charged tomorrow. They're sure. added to the list. And the other thing is like, code has been, act, uh, has been putting citations on them and following through with them. So nobody's holding back on anything. As far as I'm concerned, we had an update about what, three weeks ago? And they were clear they're moving forward with any citation given. So I'm going to give the floor to Kamali and Nama. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Jimmy, they had the exemption until last March. So we waited a few months and we did not hear anything from Mr. Fati. Then I uh, advised Alma to move forward and you know request the lien to be put on the property. And the citation is being issued one after another one. Even today, I was informed by Alma that uh, the court, the other citation has gone to the court. So unfortunately, Mr. Fatih is not responding. And I turn it over to Alma to provide more information because she's been directly involved in this process. Thank you, Kamali. Alma, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kamali, on that regards. Um, we have uh, been actively um, actually doing everything that we can with this property. Just to let you know that um, there was a letter forwarded to the Treasury Department of the State uh, letting them know that we had to back um, track the um, date to last year, July, um, with the vacant um, property tax. Um, also, the property has been leaned a couple of times, um, you know, in requesting um, the owner to, I guess, uh, pay the citations, go to court, and when he's not paid the citations, um, definitely I have been um, contacting the Treasury Department and adding liens to their property. Um, just recently, Inspector Uck um, issued two uh, different citations that we got notice of trial just yesterday. Um, for the property, one for vacant property uh, registration and one for the accumulation of deposits. Um, definitely one thing that, you know, we, um, we were still holding off is actually the court abatement, which uh, I would say, you know, it, it's up to us if we definitely wanted to move forward um, with paying um, a contractor to uh, clean out the property. So that's where we are right now with that property. How much is that, Alma? Because I know it's not a hundred thousand dollars. It's a lot more than that, correct? It is a lot more than that, Mayor, yes. It is, so, actu um, ahead, it, it is actually, um, I would say about 10,000? 10, 10, That's correct, Alma. You and how much do you have allocated in the budget for this year for that, Alma? 
So we don't have for abatements. Actually, we have um, we don't have any more funds. Um, let's put it that way for the fiscal year of 2023 um, when it comes to abatements for courts um, in any of the um, properties. Mayor, can I say something, oh, please? Go ahead, Mr. Kamali. Yeah, uh, the abatement, it cannot be feasible because he's got a lot of materials over there restored and we cannot, you know, really move, uh, remove it. It's going to cost more than $10,000 because I check that property every day and he's got, he just dropped some more last week. And unfortunately, we have no communication with him. So I think, you know, somehow we have to find a solution for this issue. So to get That's clear, right now, there are at least two citations that are up in the court and the various citations have been given, right? The, the time for him to be able to, to do something was last March. So I want to make sure it's clear that the city is not um, holding back. They're moving forward with citations court and um, adding them to, they have already been added to the $2.50 vacant list property, Jimmy. Do you have any questions for, for them? And Council, I'm going to open it up to you as well. Just uh, So I just want to make it clear, there's nothing that we're doing that's holding back anything. That, the only thing that we're holding back is the, the uh, spending money to clean up the place, which would be an expense of our part, and then going to do that. And that's something we maybe could do in the next budget. But everything else, we're proceeding as uh, with everything, including court dates and all that kind of everything. Okay. I appreciate the update on that. And, you know, I think we have to move ahead and, you know, and, and keep the pressure on, on the owner. All right. Thank you. Uh, the other thing is like, it might, I mean, we do have a budget for, we're just approved the budget for next year. And I'll tell you, we don't have $20,000 for abatement either. And because the materials is heavy, uh, heavy material, that that's the reason why it might be more. Even for, even for one of the houses here that was around the street from a corner, it was a lot of money uh, that they did that for. And that's the budget for the whole city. But, so we definitely want that to money we get behind. That money we get back. So it's not like uh, you know, it's not like this money was. I mean, it's a lien against them, so we get back from them. The, the problem with that is like it will take months and sometimes years to get it back. That's part of the problem that they're facing. Kamali, is that a new hand or old hand? Yeah, that's a new hand. No, Jimmy, I just want to let you know that we have exhausted all, all the abatement budget for FY23. And we're going to wait. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd rather, you know, give him another chance for next month. Maybe he shows up and then we can take it from there. And sometimes in FY24, if we have to do anything, I'm sure the council will give us a direction. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to open up the floor to the council. If you guys have any questions for Alma, um, you know, Jimmy gave a summary. I gave a summary. We all gave a summary. But <laughs> let us know if you have any clarity you need to. So Jerry, I'm going to go to you, Valerie, then Luke. Yeah, no, I, uh, Jimmy, thanks for elevating this. I'm, uh, you know, disappointed again that the, um, owner, you know, has kicked out the date to present to the council. And I certainly hope there's a, you know, there's a, uh, some sort of resolution or clarity on the direction of this project going forward. But um, I, I do want to say to staff, I, I really appreciate all the work you're doing here. Um, you know, I, I know this has been a challenge in terms of, um, you know, we, we have a property owner, in the city that is, you know, is, is sitting on a major controversial corridor, said they would begin delivering on a project and has been challenging to deal with in a lot of ways. So I, I appreciate the work you're doing, um, you know, and, uh, and, and and pursuing all avenues in terms of uh, getting the project going, in terms of uh, trying to assist uh, with uh, connections to the county and making sure they're connected to county economic development folks. Um, and then, you know, when avenues have been exhausted, uh, you know, pursuing those as appropriate with code compliance and so forth. So 
just want to thank you for your um, your patience and your endurance uh, and your continued efforts on this. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Um, Go ahead, Valerie. Yeah, I echo what Jared says. Um, you know, it is, it's frustrating, but it's also, um, I see that, you know, hopefully they'll have progress in the next three weeks and then they'll come to the city council meeting and tell us that it's going to be okay. Um, and so let's just push them to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Luke. Yeah, I appreciate everyone giving us the update. Um, I just hope residents know we're just as frustrated as you about progress not happening on that corner. Yes. And we're going to do everything in our power to push that, you know, this contractor does it um, or we figure out a way to get somebody who can. Um, and so I am hopeful that they'll have some good news for us in June. Um, if not, we really need to start thinking about things. I, I think, you know, what we re received a recommendation from the from the county that our economic development director gave us, I think, is kind of a to go the eminent domain route if need be, I think is, um, you know, not really plausible. That takes many, many years. Um, and I just hope that we can do something more with the county. And I hope our, our, our economic development team sort of looks at what more can be done there um, uh, if, if we don't get a, a good, good news in June. All right, thank you. Um, Alma Kamali. Uh, the inspectors, um, you know, Oak and Jesse was um, was added to, added as part of the team now. Um, thank you guys so much. I know um, we're all frustrated. I know we are, but we're making sure one that we stay following what the city ordinance are, you know, so that way um, we don't have mis misstep. But uh, rest assured that we are not holding back on any citation going to court and any of the above, uh, the city is pursuing this to the fullest. So I want to make sure that is clear. And our team has been on um, top of uh, writing letters and stuff like that. I, we did got that email. Um, I am hoping that in June he comes. If not, maybe we need to have a sit down talk and figure out what's going on. You know, whether he needs to just have a bilateral like with the city manager and myself to figure out what's going on. But we need documents in front of us, but our team is definitely following up to see if documents are being turned into the county and everything else in between. So I want you guys to know that they're not um, they're not just sitting around not doing it. They're, they're definitely moving forward with it. Um, there's definitely no special treatment here um, when it comes to it. All right. And saying that, thank you guys for for it. Uh, Jimmy, is that an older new hand? Because I wanted to open to the community. A new hand. I just want to kind of briefly mention about the eminent domain that people should be aware that if you do eminent domain, you have to at some point pay fair value for the property. So, you know, the question is, we sold it for a certain amount. We would then have to pay it back possibly more than we do it. And so I'm not sure that's going to be the, you know, the best method. But, you know, you People, I think, kind of figuring out how to go to court and find them and do it. It seems to me the best method, but, you know, hopefully they'll come next month and, and have good news for everybody. But thank you for uh, letting me bring it up. Okay, Council, since we opened the third round, are we good or do they need to open it up to you guys as well? Luke, you're good. Jerry, you're good. Valerie, good. All right, good. I just like to make sure if I give you okay. Uh, do we have any member of the community that wishes to speak or hold this piece on this item? Anything on Facebook? All right, anything here? Nope, nothing and nothing on the phone as well. All right, so thank you, um, I'm extender. Thank you to your team as well uh, for the work they're doing, not just in this um, regarding this item, but the various things they do for the city, okay? Thank you, will do. All right, so moving on to item number eight, and Jared, do me a favor, monitor the chat to see if any of the appointees is here, so that we, we know, um, because it's coming up, so if you want, text them or reach out to them, okay? All right, so discussion update on POTS Hall slash Welcome Center, 15 minutes, the Mayor and Council will have a discussion on POTS Hall slash Welcome Center, all right. Mr. Kamali, the floor is yours. I, th I think I brought that up. By the way, too, is my point on the agenda. But you, Mr. Kamali can talk first. 
No, I but appreciate that. Do you want him to do too. an update, Jimmy, or, or not? Sorry, come on. Do you want him to do an update, or or are no? You I had to, I had a discussion point I wanted to raise at the council. Okay, so let's do let's start simple with an update where we're at, right? And then we'll go to the next next phase. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Kamali, give us an update where we're at and any you know any permission you like to for us to know in the community. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Mayor. As you know that we started the project on March 28th and I have provided the information on the construction just started outside right now. We're moving forward, everything is going good. And uh, council member Jimmy and Luke Chesick asked me to look at the phase two because right now we're in phase one and phase one will cost the city 3 million and uh, I believe $70. So Jimmy said that we do have $750,000 from the state and we could have 1 million from reserve. Uh, and get a proposal for 1.75, which I provided to mayor and council, but that's not the final proposal. There could be some changes because I'm still waiting for the final proposal, but this is something very close that mayor can, uh, mayor and council can use it and vote on it if, if we have to. So, and then the rest of the project is gonna go to phase three as I provided the information to mayor and council. And if we need the information, Melissa can pull it up, I believe, if she has the information. Then I turn it over to Jimmy because Jimmy wanted to discuss the rest of the item for tonight. So can the, so step one, Melissa, do you have the information on the screen? Do you have any information you're gonna put on screen, Melissa? So I don't, I, I asked that it be on the agenda, Mayor. It was my point on the agenda. I, I understand, but Kamali asked Melissa if she has a document to put on this. Jimmy, you know what? I, I, I will appreciate if you respect me running the meeting. I'm trying to facilitate it. Kamali asked Melissa something, and I want to know if she, if they have it, they could put it on screen before giving you the mic. But I cannot do this when you cut off most of us speaking because it doesn't happen just with me and you. You do it to other ones. So I ask, to please be patient as we move to the item. So Kamali asked Melissa if she has something to put on the screen. Melissa, do you have it before we move to the next part of it? No, Mayor, I do not have anything for possible. Okay, so Kamali, in the meantime, if there's something you want to be on the screen, can you look for us? I give the mic to Jimmy. I think Jimmy has the information, and I do appreciate if Jimmy could uh, share. I can it pull with it up. I can. I can. You want me to pull it? Up? Let me. Let me. Can you pull it up, Luke? While that way, we could visually see it, and then Jimmy, I'll give you the mic. Thank you. Um, thank you, Luke. I'm sorry. I think you made me host Melissa and uh, and Luke has information. And you guys, you want me to pull up the um the sheet that has the cost for the phase two in it? Please. I still can't share. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so you can see on this as you're looking in this document here, um, phase one is what we are what we are in right now. So you'll see a lot of the stuff that they're doing right now is covered in phase one. Um, what they've done is they split the project into two more phases. Um, so it'd be phase two and phase three to see what could be get to see what could get done with the proposal that Kamali laid out. Um, so they'd be able to finish carpentry. Um, do thermal insulation, metal doors and frames, aluminum windows and storefronts, skylights, plaster and gypsum board, tile, flooring, painting, um, louvers and vents, flagpoles, um, and fire sprinklers, plumbing, heating, and electrical. Um, so that would be a lot and then all the kind of extras. Um, that'd get us a big chunk of the way there. What would be left is landscaping, um, metals, 
the the big one, which would be architectural woodwork and cabinets that sort of building out the inside, um, signage, um, toilet, bath and laundry accessories, um, projection screens, residential appliances, manufactured casework, window coverings, site furnishings and the elevator. Um, so it'd be everything except for really the the elevator and a lot of the um, finishing touches, um, which would be a great um, way to get us um, almost there um, uh, under the proposal Jimmy had laid out. And I'll turn it over to Jimmy. Okay, so Jimmy, the floor is yours. I just want to make sure we're on the same page so that will, when you're ready to tell us what you need to tell us, Jimmy, where more understanding was going on. Go on. Well, Mayor, first of all, I somewhat uh, aggravated that usually when somebody asked that the point be an agenda, they're allowed to introduce the and say what they want to say. And I asked that the point be on the agenda. Apologize for interrupting, but it was like my point to discuss. And I also feel that, you know, I apologize for interrupting. I think you interrupt as much as everyone. So I don't like saying it's like I'm the only one who interrupts people. But getting to the point on the agenda, uh, we have $750,000 from the grant. And, uh, you know, we're trying to lock in more money. I think we have a, about a two to three million dollar hole. That trying to raise that much money with grants, additional is going to be very hard. That trying to like lock in a part to phase two at the current rates would save us a lot of money. And if we could, you know, kind of partition off, you know, the grant which we have, it's in the budget, and then also take a million dollars from the uh, uh, investment fund or slash reserves that would get us like 80% of the way. And then we could try and raise grants for the uh, last uh, part of the thing. And that's why I had suggested that maybe we could get an estimate and, you know, kind of move ahead with trying to, you know, you know appropriate the, the grant money uh, as well as uh, money from the reserves. And then we would only have a million dollar left, which we, you know, probably could, Hopefully we could get through reserves trying to get $3 million, I think is beyond. So that was the uh, thing I wanted to say, but thank you. Okay, so Juan, Kamali, thank you for the update. Luke, thank you for bringing the information forward and, and Jimmy for the information you said. I think you guys tend to forget part of my job is trying to keep the agenda moving. And I could easily just ask Melissa to give you guys the timer and she tells you like, you know, when you guys run out of time, I'm fine with that, but it's kind of hard sometimes to follow you guys through. Either way, um, I guess you guys heard a proposal, <clears throat> more or less. So, so, okay, let me figure out what you guys want to do next. I'll open up the floor to you guys. So one, you guys heard an update from Mr. Kamali, what work is supposed to be in phase one right now, right? Mr. Kamali, the $3 million is phase one, right? Right, right, Mayor. right. So Mayor. Bring down and just let me know if I'm correct on this. Phase two is part of the $750,000 that we're gonna use that we're gonna be getting, correct? Right. Does that cover all phase two or more money? No. For phase two? no, the total for phase two is $1,740,000. 609 oh, thank you. Okay. So, okay. So that's where the million dollars that we still need to complete phase two, right? right. And if right. we're lucky, we're going to get another hundred thousand dollars from a grant that we're writing right now. Yeah. Right um, now. Okay. So the suggestion was to look into the reserves or uh, the fund fund. No. I always call them reserve. I'm sorry. I, I I think we've been calling the research for a while, but it's like for an for a million dollars to be able to complete phase two. That is the the proposal, correct? Jimmy? That's what I'm suggesting, yes. Okay. Because we so, could nail it down at because we could nail it down at current prices as opposed to waiting two years and having a inflation. And and because we have this extra seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, which we now should spend you know, at the current, at the current uh, expense rates, the okay, current so gonna, know, prices. Yeah. I'm going to open it to the council. 
I know we were told in an email that um, that the other phases will have to go out to bid. That's something that we will have to have a more clarity. So you could ask our team, our, our legal team, Kamali, about it, what, what it means uh, if we're moving forward in this direction when it comes to timing as well. So that would that factor in on what we're supposed to be doing. Because I, I remember distinctly that that's Ask what what it means if we um if we are opting to go this route to extend the contract to include these items would that be a, a valid thing for us to do or not? Because if it goes, the only reason why I said is because if it goes out to bid, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Those numbers will completely change because you're putting it out to bid, right? Exactly. Exactly. It could be more, it could be more expensive, Mayor, because the contractor has all the equipment there right now and they're trying to work with us. And I think it, it is in serious interest to use this price and move forward. Okay, so I think we're all in the same page, Council. I'm gonna open it up to you. Um and and a a very important note, our you know. Our teams, our, our team, our legis our consulting team is still going to fight to get us more money uh, to make sure we finalize this project. So this is definitely uh, work that's being done. If like if by by the grace of go greatness, we're able to get three more million, we could always um, utilize the money. It, it shouldn't be a problem. All right. So I'm going to open up the floor. Um, Jared, Valerie, uh, Luke, go ahead. Okay, sorry, can we can you just clarify again what the real quick what the action we're approving here is a million dollars from reserves to, yeah. to carry forth phase two, correct? So it's not a vote, it's a it's a discussion to discussion, have because, right. yeah, because it's the first yeah. and usually we have it in the work session. So I mean this is just a discussion and then we'll address it in a work session with more details, right? More information yeah. from a team. If you guys need anything, I think it's right now. It's just to, just to put it out there. Yeah. So directionally, I'm in. I, yeah, directionally, I'm in support of that. I think um, you know we I, we we have a pots hall that we need to keep on moving on. I think all the reasons that Mr. Kamali laid out make um, make a lot of sense. And uh, yeah, move, leveraging sort of the moment that we have is um, is is good. So I'm I'm. I'm in support of that approach, and thank you, Jimmy, for um, you know bringing this up on the uh, agenda tonight. Thank you, Jared. Valerie. Um, yeah, I'm good. I'm good with this approach as well, um, and thank you for bringing this up as well. Thank you. All right, Luke. Okay, um, Jimmy. Thank you for doing this work, Mr. Kamali. Thank you for working with the contractor to make sure this is all um, this can all be done. Um, I, I I support this this path forward. Um, I think what we need is, um, like the mayor said, making sure Alyssa is good with us just amending this contract for the extra one point seven million, and then asking Melissa Melissa asking Alyssa um, what needs to be done from a legislative perspective in order to free that money up for the contract. Um, I we might need a public hearing in order to pull that money out of the investment fund. Um, so looking at timing, um, uh, I think the, the ask for Alyssa would be, can we talk about this at the May work session and then at the June legislative session, have a public hearing and a vote, um, uh, if that's possible. Cause I think we'd all love to keep July and August free. Um, so I think that could be the direct question to Alyssa. I'll put this in an email too. Um, if there is consensus from everyone on, on moving forward that way, um, otherwise I'm in support. Thank you. All right, thank you, Luke. Uh, Jimmy, there's anything else to add? Because I'll have the next word. Yeah, I would just uh, maybe could ask Alyssa. I'm not sure it needs a, another uh, bid because the they, they bid on the whole contract at one point and maybe, you know, making it part, but we could ask Alyssa whether, you know, uh, having them do a phase two needs a special bid or not. I'm, I don't think it does, but, you know, we should get a legal opinion on that. Yeah, I get it, because that was the last email she sent us when it comes to the second phase. So, um, because if we put it out and we said it was going to be in phase, 
she'll figure it out. I'm not gonna talk about legal terms. She'll give us the answer and what the steps is in the legal side of it. Um, the other thing, if if money has to be reallocated, moving to the budget, it needs at least two readings and a hearing. Um, so take that into consideration. So this might not be done like tomorrow, right? So that's one. Number two, for me, uh, we quite it to the work session again because I do have certain questions. Um, one, what is going to be, if any, penalties for us removing money from the, our investment fund? Um, that I need to know what it would look like uh, because you are withdrawing money from an investment fund. And what does the what are the requirements that bank need and are, how are we tied to like keeping them there or not? Um, the other part of it is like, how are we replenishing those investment funds that we're going to be utilizing? So I need finance. If you guys could please come up with a plan on what it would look like to get the money back into the investment fund, because um, it's not just about grabbing the money and using it, but it's also, you know, making sure that we have a plan. Uh, you know, to me, I'll relate it to you how I see it. We uh, borrow $2 million from the bank, right? And we have to pay it back. If we're borrowing money to ourselves to our invest to from our investment, we need to have a plan to pay it back as well. So if it looks like we don't we need to start, you know, you know, finding a way to putting X amount of money, um, and that might be a legal question, right? X amount of money back into the bank um to make up for for that amount. I want to make sure the plan is move forward along with it. The other thing is like if I find out two things, Mr. Kamali, do we um what will be uh, when it comes to costs and fees, whether we take the whole sum at once or we could do it in portions as we pay the contractor, right? Because we first we'll pay them for phase one and I imagine then we'll pay them for phase two, right? As they do the work. So the, the way I see it is like one, find out what the cost is. And if we could push it as far as we can before we pull it out to start to still get some money in our investment, then that'll be great. But I definitely would like to see a plan uh, from our team when it comes to like recouping back that money, even if that means like, you know, for the next few years of budget, we might need to put, um, you know, 6% back into the, um, reduce our budget by 6% to try to um, to make up for some of the money we're going to be utilizing up front. But I definitely would like to see at least a plan. So Mr. Kamali, on my behalf, um, I will need one, uh, what's the cost of withdrawing any money, if there's any, I don't know the answer to that, for withdrawing the investment money. Two, what's the latest possible we need to withdraw the money by? Um, <clears throat> uh, that'd be the second one. And like I explained, because if we're paying for phase one, right? And they say like, it's gonna take us a month to get it out as an example. If we don't have to take it out until like, we're ready to pay for the second phase, then then that's that. Then that's fine, you know. So it could be there for a little longer. And three, what is the plan to be able to recuperate those funds in order for us not to? And the other thing is like, please give us a list of how much money we have in our investment and our and on it, so that way we, we could alert the committee by the next meeting. Um, if we take this million dollars, how much money is left there? So we have a um a conscious um a conscious decision to make. And obviously, like Elisa, when it comes to like legislative, what we need to do because it has to be a budget amendment to circulate the money back in. And if we do need to do it for this, for this um, FY23, or do we do it for FY24? But um, Luke, you said you're going to write an email together, right? So if you need me to write my part, let me know as well. Okay. Uh, all right. So Luke, go ahead. The first yours. Sorry. Yeah, I think I got it all. I, I think the solution on, you know. Um, putting money into the investment fund will be, you know, having to, that'll be our call at the budget next year, having to, to, to pass a budget where we, or amend a budget early next year, where we, where we cut back on an expense and put money, direct money into the investment fund. So I think that would be, you know, staff can come up with a proposal, but I think that's going to be our call um, eventually, but I can put all that into an email for staff to think about what we could do there. Yeah, I, I, I fully get it. Look, it's our decision, but I want to make sure they have a plan because the, the more we're all on the same page, the better it'll be for us to make the best decisions moving forward. And that way the staff know what is expected for them, especially if we're going to aim at doing a five-year budget. So we could project like in five, you know, ideally in the five years, what it will look like to try to recoup that money back. Right. So that's the idea of it. But that way they know that we're aiming at getting the money back into our savings. But I want to make sure we're fully conscious of how much money we have 
left if we do pull that one. So um, in, in case of like something that, you know, like I told you guys, the HUR, HUR is the highway use revenue money is not going to be there forever. And if that money goes away, we are going to take a hit in the budget, you know, uh, a big one. Um, so as we're moving over green and we're working very heavily to try to find legislation to um, figure out how we could like get some of the money from the electric vehicle fueling, right? That's going to um, ideally phase out um, the gas because that's where we get the, the HUR money uh, for the cities, for the highways, and that allows us to be able to work on the streets and sidewalks and stuff like that, right? So that's something that we need to um, we need to plan because it is coming, and I would rather us be prepared now than have to sit there and take a big hit on the budget. And um, that was one of the reasons why uh, quite a few years ago they went from giving the city a check to saying uh, the state was upside down. Um, they needed funding, and they cut off HR for the whole entire um, municipalities. So all the municipalities got themselves in um, in a bit of um, in a bit of trouble, um, quite a few of them that I talked to had it to increase the taxes severely in order to make up or stay afloat. All right, so Luke, um, circulating, finding to ask something is fine, and thank you for taking the lead in uh, in writing. I know you love writing, and Jared loves to do letters, so that works great. <laughs> All right, okay. So, um, Council, I'm going to open up the um, I'm going to open up the floor to the public. So on the next work session, Mr. Kamali, if it's possible, we could get that information for us so we could start the discussion and, and figure out what we're going to do next. Um, because I do understand time is of the essence, but I want to make sure the public has enough time to have an opinion one way or another. Okay. We'll do. We'll do. Thank you. And Jimmy, thank you for bringing this information forward. Okay. Um, all right. So if you're a member of the community that wishes to speak on this item, let us know. Uh, Jared, um, anything from Facebook? Thank you so much. Um, and I don't see anything on the chat. Okay, uh, Kamali, uh, anything to add? Ron, Jimmy? Thank you, Mayor. You're good? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. On this topic? Yeah. I'm asking uh, just my last asking words, you know, before I leave everybody is that, you know, uh, the key the finishing this project is kind of critical for the city moving forward and trying to figure out how it's going to get done and how we can put that piece together for the rest of the development is critical. And so, you know, uh, the other thing I just want to mention is we were very, very lucky this year. We got like uh, there's actually one million dollars came from the state between the $750,000 from the uh, Potts Hall, $50,000 for the Washington Bridge Unit, $300,000 for Gateway. Uh, you know, I, I was on a county council meeting and there was a lot of resentment that, you know, so much money came to our area, which is great. But, you know, you know, while it's hopeful we can get it, we can't expect to get that kind of money every year. So we may have to get our own resources. But uh, again, I just think, you know, kind of finishing this project you know, it will be really critical to kind of moving on with the rest of the development in our downtown area. Thank you. That's all. Okay. And Jimmy, we usually start the meeting the morning at six thirty, so that way you could stay your peace <laughs> for for the elected officials that are leaving. Uh, Valerie, you you were reelected, so it's a little bit different now. <laughs> you don't have to say your goodbyes. All right. So, um. Thank you for the information. Um, I think it also will give us another reason to have Brian Nettler join us when we eventually do the ribbon cutting. So he's going to have no other option than to come to the city and, and celebrate um, the building. So um, there you go, Brian Nettler. We're, work, we're looking forward to seeing you that day as well. All right. So moving on to, I will reserve. I don't know what that means. Okay. All right. Uh, Danielle. I'm not sure what you mean, but I will reserve. This is something you need me to read. Danielle Carter, are you there? 3200 block of Shepherd. Oh, Danielle, you're putting messages and cutting me off. I see you. She said, uh, for those listening, I'll talk about it later. 
All right, perfect. All right, moving on to the next one. New business discussion and board and recommendations to the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission, MNC-PPC, appointments to the Mount Rainier. Mayor, you cut off, or at least for me. Oof, I apologize. Town Center, um, LMTC, 15 minutes. Melissa, you have the names of the, of the people. Mayor and Council will vote on recommendations to the Maryland Capital Park and Planning Commission. Melissa, do you have the name? Thank you so much. All right, so I'm gonna read the names. Uh, Jared, do you wanna intrude? You wanna just, why don't you read it, Jared? Just read the names for me. Yeah, of course. Um, so just a reminder for folks watching, and I, I will do a shorter version of this this time, Mayor. Um, the uh, Mount Rainier Legacy Mixed Use Town Center, it's a basically a advisory committee that works to make um, recommendations on the exterior, um, exterior design and um, buildings to Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. So it's a, a committee of seven, uh, each with two year terms. Uh, previously, um, the committee was set up a little differently. The uh, code changed and we now uh, point all five, uh, all seven, sorry, all seven members for a two-year term, um, uh, basically every two years. So um, we had a work session last uh, uh, two weeks ago where we talked about um, the committee members that we were interested in appointing. Um, and based on that, we uh, did, did two things. Um, one was continue the, uh, continue the uh, five members of the committee that wanted to uh, continue to serve the committee. Uh, some of them have been on serving the committee for many years and bring a lot of institutional memory and uh, knowledge. Um, and that is um, that is Anthony Lee, Alina Brav, uh, Nathan Birch, Nathan Setteroff, and Robin Bliss. And so with uh, two folks not continuing on, we had uh, two additional, um, two new, uh, new, new members join the committee or, or want to join the committee. So those two are uh, Sachin Kandari and uh, Samantha Kay. So those folks were um, were uh, um, the two additional that we uh, talked about. And what we need to do in this meeting is uh, vote on all those. And then we will formally send a letter to Maryland National Capital Park and Planning, who will then and that, that's our recommendations who will then confirm those and then formally appoint them to the committee. Thank you. It's a little bit faster. <laughs> it was 29 minutes. Uh, but um, I wanted you to read the names. <laughs> but, okay, so you did get a pleasure with the LMUTC, LMUTC is. Um, uh, so basically you see the names here in front of you, Anthony Lee, well, you already read them. Um, so I know it's like I'm not trying to butcher nobody's name. You already did that uh, very well reading the names. So I'll tell you guys, um, Jared did explain that once we vote on them today, and if it has majority, hopefully unanimously, um, support, a letter is sent to um, L LMUTC. Um, basically, um, Melissa, I'll stop by tomorrow. We'll sign it so it could go out directly tomorrow, letting them know um, this is the people that we appoint, by how many were they appoint, and we recommend them, they review them, they vote on them, and they move forward. So far, as far as I recall, in our long, 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 long six years of serving, they have not returned no one back that we have recommended. And we're hoping it's gonna be a smooth process um, as well. I will ask you, Melissa, can you uh, make sure, and Jared, I'm, I'm assuming you're still gonna be part of this one, Write the year that we appoint them so that way we know um, in a year and a half that appointments are up. So that way we could do the same thing, do the call out and stuff like that to try to make sure we meet the deadline. All right. So Melissa, in the list of committees, write, write their information um, in order for us to know that they got appointed today and it's a two-year term. So that way a year and a half into it, we um, ask them what, what their wish is and, and move forward to figure out whether we want to reappoint them or what it looks like for us, okay? So, all right, so council, you have in front of you um, the names of the Mount Rainier Legacy Mixed Use members that were submitted. 
Um, so I need to have a motion on the floor to approve and then we'll open it to discussion in case one of them wants to say something, okay? So can I have a motion on the floor to approve um, the members in front of us um, for, for recommendations towards the LMUTC? I, I move to um, move forward the seven names in front of us as recommendations to the MNCPPC for appointment to the Mount Rainier LMUTC. Can you read them, Jared? So that would uh, be for the Ricker? Yep, Anthony, the move the seven names, Anthony Lee, Alina Brav, Sachin Kandari, Nathan Birch, Nathan Sederoff, Robin Bliss, and Samantha Kay. Thank you so much. Is there a second? I try. Second. <laughs> All right, I guess somebody will second. All right, so I think that's Valerie who's second. Um, any discussion? So I'm going to open up the floor. I We do have Samantha here. Samantha, would you like to say anything? No, not particularly. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to sit in and kind of hear what it was all about. So thank you. All right, perfect, Samantha. And thank you so much for um, volunteering to be part of this committee as well as to all the members, Anthony, Anthony um, Elena, Sanchin, Nathan, both Nathans, uh, Robin, and, and you as well. All right, perfect. So I'm going to call for a vote. And if once approved, um, they will be, um, they will be ready for us to send the letter tomorrow. Okay, so um, any abstentions, objections? Hearing none, um, all seven members have been approved unanimously. So congratulations. And thank you for um, serving the city of Mount Rainier. We look forward to great collaboration and, and work. And for those continuing, thank you for signing up for um, another round. And for the new ones, we look forward to working with you. All right, perfect. Uh, thank you, Jerry, also for being, um, um, following through with this as the liaison, okay? All right, so moving on to the next item. Oh, another long item. Hopefully not. All right. So ARPA discussion and vote number 29. The mayor and council will vote on the following projects. Police computer, uh, 55,000. Police uniforms, 30,500. By co-op eight street, uh, 8,000 street and sidewalk upgrade, 100,000. City uh, based home repairs program, 150,000, thrown bathroom, 30,000, youth scholarship program, 42,000. So as a review for the residents, um, we had discussed through the budget project to pull some stuff from um, the budget to put them on. Um, the things in front of you are one uh, time items. Um, so therefore, um, you know, if, fund that, if, if ARPA, you know, they didn't happen, they're not going to move forward with this. But since we have it here, it's a one item, so this is not something that we need to keep funding from this one. Some of them will go back um, to it in a couple of years, like the computers, like the uniforms, um, and so on and so on, as well as the scholarship. But I think this will get us to FY26 with some of the items. Okay, so saying that, I'm going to go open up the floor to... Con Melissa, can you put it on the screen? I'm so sorry. Thank you. Okay, Council, so I'm going to open it up to you guys. Um, anything you guys need to add? Questions? How do you feel? And uh, then we'll vote um, as a block. In the meantime, Ron or Luke, you might have this. Let us know what the sum, if you have the document, Luke, to put it up, the one that shows um, if approved, this on how much money yeah. we're allocating and how much money we have left over for ARPA. Yeah, I and can just... I can pull that up if you want that up. Yeah. Can you put it, Melissa, while, while Luke is putting it up, just to let you guys know, um, our team just submitted the latest ARPA report. Um, so that was completed. So they, the city is in um, compliance with submitting submittal of the ARPA report. We have not um, delayed on any of them. Correct, Kamali? That is correct, Mayor. The second reporting was 
sent on April 26, which was due on April the 30th. All right, so we sent it even early. All right, so I want to make sure you guys are aware. And this is basically the track sheet. And look, um, since the color, something's changed. Can you tell me, can you let the community know what the color means? So that way they are aware as you, uh, as you present, as we present the things in front of us. Yeah. Um, the blue line, the, everything is colored blue are areas where, uh, usually at a work session, sometimes at a prior legislative session, we have consensus for moving forward with something, but we haven't actually voted on it. Um, so you'll see that on all these items here. Um, there are a couple items we're discussing tonight that we have already discussed. We just didn't have consensus on the figures yet. And that's the bike co-op for 8,000 and streets and sidewalks for 100,000. Uh, right now, we've allocated 4 million of the over 5 million, 4.6 million. We have 773,000 remaining. Um, if we approved um, the items that you see here in blue, um, that would be an extra 300,000 we'd approve, which would mean we'd have uh, $459,500 remaining. Um, if we if we added the streets and sidewalks to that, we would have 359,500 uh, remaining. Um, if we added the bike co-op, it would be 359 uh, for uh, uh, 92. Okay. Thank you, Luke. And um, this sheet is available somewhere in the website, Mr. Kamali? Yes? No, that sheet is not available, okay. but we could make it available tomorrow. That's fine. Can, we, can you make sure it's available under the ARPA sure. one so that way residents know where we're headed? And um, I know, thank you, Luke, for doing a, a great job at putting this in writing. It just makes it so much easier for us to follow and figure out where we're going. So. I will ask us to do something so we could clear the deck. Anything that we have already reached consensus, can we just vote on it so we could move it out of the list and we could have conversation on the ones that don't? So that was two different conversations. Are you guys okay with that? All right. So um, police computers, 55,000 um, um, objections, abstentions. How are we? Okay, so how about we do it, the police uniforms and the computers? I'll, how about this? Police computers, police uniforms, the throne bathroom, the scholarship, and the city-based home program. All of us, we have reached consensus in the last meeting. Will you guys be fine on making a motion collectively for those first? Okay, so can I have a motion on the floor to approve, uh, approve from ARPA funding? Police so computers for $55,000, police uniforms for $36,500, the throne bathroom for $30,000, scholarship program adding to the funding already allocated an additional $42,000, city-based home, home repair program, um, repetitive from above, for $150,000. Any, uh, so um, can you guys make a motion? So moved. Second. 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 It's been probably moved and second. Oh, you guys not now you guys are in like <laughs> and liaise and singing and chorus, right? Um, it's been probably moved and second. Any objections, abstentions? Hearing none. Uh can you please turn all those items into green? Please. And green means they have been voted and they are moving into being all allocated. So look for the scholarship. If we could, I mean, if you could update it and move it up to um, to the scholarship line item and put $42,000 approved on today, that way they know like, um, you know, for a total blah, blah, blah. You don't have to do it right now, but that way you could clean it up and then move the 150,000, um, there you go. Thank you, Luke. Five, two. What's 63 plus 42? Five. 105. <laughs> You're like, okay, perfect. Thank you, Luke. And then if we can move the city base home repair back to his 
Thank you. Back to like the, pro the proposal, either leave it there and erase it from the top if you want, but put on each of them what they got approved. That would definitely will help. So this document, as you see in front of you, has um, what it is, um, how much is approved, the steps and updates, uh, where we're at, uh, more or less the second responsibility of the project. There's a couple of us that have been working in now with some of them. And if we have any specific recommendation or any additional note. We can delete this one. I leave it, a, put a note on it, put a move into, move into budget, Luke. So that way um, they don't think we, that, that way they know it's at home. Wait. Yeah, well, that was actually a different thing. I'll do that later. Um, yeah, the only reason why I wanted to have it there because that way it shows that we had that discussion and where it went, right? So that way I want people to know that, you know what, we have like the 29 discussions, so that way they could follow also with this document, okay? I don't know, I'll find, I'll find Valerie's later. I okay, that's fine. That's okay. what I said, don't, don't worry about it. Just clean it up after you're, you're good. All right, so there's agreement on this. Let's have a conversation about the other two. Let's start with streets and sidewalks because um, I'm not 100% sure what the dis disagreement on it was. So uh, Luke, I'll see you the floor. Yeah, I had a thought on this. Um, uh, you know, we have a big study coming up. Um, it's... All the stuff in there is going to cost a lot of money. Our goal is that we're going to try to be able to go after some federal funding to help us actually do the engineering, um, which will be a big first step, um, and then do the construction, which will be a big second step. Um, and I was I was hoping that we could look at taking more of this remaining funding. So, um, you know, I... I, I I'm also cognizant of something, Mayor, you said in the past, which is that, you know, we need to have all this allocated. Um, you know, there's debt ceiling negotiations coming up and there's talks of unspent ARPA funding getting cut there. Um, so what I would say, we could always revisit this if we wanted to, but just for making it a clean slate um, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what others have planned here, but I think we've done a really good job at allocating our funding towards projects that I think everybody's brought to the table here and they've all been really good projects. And so I would just say, take the rest of that 300 and whatever it would be, 300 and some thousand dollars and just put it into the streets and sidewalks line item because we'd be able to get a lot of stuff done because that would put us over a million dollars for next year on streets and sidewalks between ARPA and what's in the budget. And I think that would just be a good look if we went after federal funding and would say the city's already ponied up a million. Um, and uh, so uh, you guys get it. I think that's, but that's that's just my proposal there. Okay. Um, so council, um, if I heard correctly, uh, Luke, you're thinking of um, adding more than 100,000. So um, more than 100,000, right? Put whatever the remaining of it is. Yeah. Unless somebody, I know that um, Jared, they talked about having a little bit of cushion in case some of these water storm items are oh, yeah. needed. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you this. The other thing is like that gives me a sense that it might need a little bit more funding is the city-based home repair. But um, I had a meeting, uh, the mayors had a meeting with the sheriff's office. There's going to potentially be more evictions coming through, right? The funding in the county and the state are are done at this point. So we might look, in, we might have to look into um, helping a bit more with some of the rent as well. So that's the only thing that I want to make sure that we're aware. But those numbers, um, the, there's quite a bit. I mean, the core can only move so fast, right? And that's actually like helpful because there's only so much they could see. So I would say I don't know if I could we could do the whole three hundred thousand left. We could put more because um, it's needed, but I definitely want to make sure we have room for water storm management, similar rental help. Uh, the food one, uh, Melissa, we're already, we're already like down to the last bit of it, maybe for this year, right, Melissa Sam? Correct. We were going to put a proposal to help for up to FY twenty six. So that's something that we're working on putting a proposal forward, but. You know, so it's down to the last little bit of money left. 
and we have to go back and clean up and figure out what it looks like for the, any of the item. So ideally, the police um, department will get um, will get a grant uh, to cover some of the computers, and that's the case. Uh, some of the money allocated will drop down. Um, yeah. So Luke, you have your hands up, and then I open up to everybody else. Yeah, I was going to say the other thing. This program manager, we allocated two hundred thousand dollars for. Um, Kamali and Melissa have been doing that, um, or sorry, was originally approved for three hundred thousand. Um, but I think we only calculated this as two hundred thousand. So I think we only calculated this as two hundred thousand. So I think we could take that money away if we're comfortable with how things have gone and have that to put towards stormwater or rental assistance or housing um, either tonight or, or or later date, whatever you guys want to do. Okay. And um, okay. So open up the floor and Kamala, I do have a question regarding the ARPA consultant that 10 K take us all the way for to 2026 or that is only um, lesser so time. Three years. It's only three years, Mayor, which okay, is so 100,000, 100,000, 30,000 per year. So we started in 22, 23, 24. So guys, be aware that that's up to 24. That does include 25 and 26. And that's something that we might have to put additional money on as well if we decide to continue um, having a consultant and some of the work has also been done by them. Um, so that's basically where um, that has happened. So if that's the case, we might need... Um, another uh, 60,000 to be added there, you know, so that is, um, so if you could make a note on a loop that will help to put, um, so we need to have the discussion. So that way we don't fire and stuff with no money and no consult in the last two years, especially after, so to clarify after 20, 24, Four. Four. 2024, is when everything needs to be allocated. That's the reason why also there's the urgency. The second report just went in. So that when we have the third report, the money is allocated because one of the questions that it says is how much money have you allocated and how much money you have spent, right? So we have to have everything allocated by, by 24 and we could spend it up to 26. But that also means that if, you know, Thomas was our contractor for three years, we need to make sure that we have a consultant uh, for one, both years, so at least one of the years, but we need to make sure that money is being put aside to make sure that administratively that's taken care of. I know he has been helping with some of the forms and stuff like that, but we need to make sure that um, that that it that we take into the account. So I don't want to zero the account completely, but you know we could create a different line item that allows us to be able to move that to to fill holes, whatever you guys want to call it, right? Um, but I will say to you, make sure that we're going to have to have another update to clean up the the item to figure out there's something else missing. Okay, so Jerry, I'm going to give you the floor. Valerie, uh, go ahead, and then I'm going to go with Jimmy. You're right. muted. <laughs> yep, yep, sorry. Um, no, Mayor, thanks for bringing up, uh, you know, I, I agree that we, you know, need to be, Obviously, you need to spend down our ARPA funds. I heard that is clearly from you, clearly is you from Senator um, uh, Senator Cardin. Um, so when we when we went over to the Hill, um, but I, I do agree that we should, you know, look at some critical areas. I think, um, you know, ad additional assistance, whether food or rental, because uh, there's still still some impacts to the least uh, least advantaged in our community. Um, and then, yeah, agreed on the stormwater piece. And Luke, I agree on the on on the needing to um, have funds for streets and sidewalks as well. And I'm, you know, particularly thinking about that because I don't want to go through this exercise and then maybe we're not successful the first year, and then we have no funds to implement, and then we don't have enough. Like we want to, if we're unsuccessful, and we'll find out by this fall in this in this round of safe streets for all or any state money, like we should be able to like, hey. We got some projects and we're going to run with them because it's i think it's a hard sell if we went through this whole process and then we threw up our hands and said we don't have any money so um i uh i do 
Um, Luke, thanks, and Selena, thanks for pointing out on the project manager and ARPA consultant that we have some additional flexibility there. Uh, so I, you know, I, I agree that we could pull those things back. Um, Mr. Kamali, I did want to say with, if we're going to, um, let's just say we put in for like a big safe streets for all grant, let's say, I don't know, let's say it's like 7 million or something like that. We, we shot for the moon and we win it. One thing I wanted to say is we can, in grants like this, we can build the cost of a project manager into the grant. So if we have a big, sure. you know, if we have a time limited sort of mm -hmm. project that's significant, even though it's a capital grant, we can build the cost of sort of an operating cost into that. Exactly. And we should when we're applying, because that gives you guys space from a staffing perspective over the lifetime of a long grant. And it also, um, you know, it, it, it gives us wiggle room on these things here. So I, I just wanted to flag that as something <laughs> as you and Bill are uh, working on um, putting something together for this year. Um, and then uh, Luke, I totally agree with you about leveraging ARPA funds. Did want to just remember and remind everyone that when we go in for federal funds, our ARPA money cannot count as it's federal. We can't federal. It's not uh, you can't match federal with federal. You can bring federal to the table to show you have some resources, but it won't necessarily help us meet the minimum match requirements if we have some. And that depends on the program. But for a lot of our things that we apply for, usually the match might be minimal. Sometimes it can be waived or sometimes there's none at all. Uh, and uh, that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Jared. Outstanding points, Valerie. Um, yeah, and Luke, thank you for um, bringing that up. I think we do need to invest heavily into our streets and sidewalks. Um, I think um, I stood at the Nature Center for nine hours or something yesterday, and I watched all these people, you know, walking across a, a intersection that was way too wide, and um, you know, without any any way for them to safely cross. Um, and so I think it's very important that we we work throughout the city to make sure that everywhere is safe for everyone. Um, so I, I definitely agree with putting more money in, and I, I would be supportive of doing that today, but I wouldn't put all of it in because I definitely have a million other projects I want to work on. So, um, and I haven't finished putting them all together, but I will. Um, um, but that's where I'm at. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Jimmy? I don't have anything to add. Okay. So, Kamali, can you also email us when is the third report due so that way um, we know what our timeline looks like to be able to allocate some of these funds, if need be. Here, every year, every year the report is due only once a year, which is April the 30th. And I will okay. remind you next year. Perfect. So we, yeah, so that way if we need to put some stuff in, especially because 24, we have to have everything allocated. Can you guys put a reminder sure. on that, you know, ideally like, you know, by this fall, we need to have the conversation we'll of what it looks like. Um, in order to associate the funds. So I will say um, I, it's a good point that you made, Jared, when it comes to federal with federal. I don't want to make sure that if we are going for infrastructure funds, we might not, um, we not, we might not be able to, we would not be able to use the federal funds from ARPA to match the other ones. So we might have to take them out straight. We might have to swipe like we did right now, you know, items that we could do with ARPA. And then like, you know, put that, put it in the budget in order for us to like match them that way. So at least in that sense, ARPA is giving us a little bit of a safety net. So we might have to put what we did this time, right? The officers, computers and uniforms under ARPA. And then how do you call it? Uh, put the money for, uh, for something else in the budget in order to maximize on it. Because a lot of these things that we view, like, you know, the ARPA, the care funds, right? And even the infrastructure, a lot of these are like one-time money that goes out. And I'll tell you this, the county is already getting money to do some projects as well. So that was also the urgency of what um, what it looks like for, for cities to also um, make sure, you know, obviously we're going to submit as much as we can because we're supposed to match dollar for dollar if I'm correct, right? Which means that if we say like we're going to do $5 million worth of project, that means that that those five millions need to happen, even if it's like, um, after, you know, from several years, right? But that's something that we definitely could do. But <clears throat> Take that also into consideration when it comes to projects. The other thing is like both um, Bunker Hill, well, three streets, Bunker Hill, Shepherd, and 34, those are, that's work that we still need to do and look for funding when it comes to the, the safe routes as well, money for the schools, right, to be able to get funding. Because um, now that uh, we have, um, now that the framework council and our council 
has been like they got sworn in today, so that that's why they're dressed up because I literally just came back from uh, Brentwood um, from their sworn in, right? Um, we will be able to proceed, but the last you know weeks, um, you know, they were very busy like campaigning, so that was understandable. So we'll be able to pick up the meetings once again, uh, Kamali. Um, so that way we figure out where we're at because they're putting for thirty four. They're putting half yes. of the half of the cost, and we're putting the other half. So at least we have some help there. For the other ones, it's directly us, unless we go for grants. Um, so it's up to you guys. I need to hear what is it that you guys want to do with those one hundred thousand. Do you guys want to just hold on them and bring bring them back from a different meeting where we have a more understanding, or what do you want to do? Luke, your mic is open. So yeah, I think we can vote on some things tonight. Like I think we could, I think we could take the, I think we could sort of unalloc. Well, we probably want to ask Himmler um, what the process is for unallocating money that we've allocated, like the two hundred thousand. What's the pro? What's the? That is what's the? Care. Sorry, what's the? What's the process there um, for unallocating money? So maybe we don't do that tonight. What I would say we we should do is I think we should at least give ourselves um, maybe create like a, I think we should do like two hundred. I mean I think we should do three hundred thousand for streets and sidewalks because how much is in our current budget? Are you asking me, Lou? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much Don't is in our current? Kamali. Yeah, right now we got four hundred thousand dollars for the street and sidewalk, one twenty-one for resurfacing, eighty-five thousand for traffic calming devices. It's so about what's the total, uh, Mr. Five hundred five hundred five oh six, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know what you guys want to do. If you wanna we could we could take a look at this again at the at the at the May work session and talk this through what the figures are. Um, I'm open to either. Yeah, can we? I will. I mean, Council, I I will say let's wait on it, you know, to get more answers. But also, I want to make sure that we are that. we are conscious that we cannot match Pharaoh with Pharaoh, right? So we might have to take a look at our budget to figure out, like for FY twenty. 25 to see what more money could be added. Um, if a 6% of we need to increase on it, but I will say let's hold on on it to get more clarity. And I think for reallocated, I, I well, that'll be a question for Tom, unless you know the answer, Mr. Kamala, see your hand up and I see Jerry's hands up. Go ahead. I just want to clear, uh, just correct myself. It's 606, 605. Look, I'm sorry. It's not 506. That's six hundred thousand and six dollars, and that's basically what six percent of the budget, Mr. Kamali. I could say that something like that. Okay, so all right, so you guys heard the number was six o four. Six o five. Six o five. So six o five right now. Um, so Jared, you have a question or comment regarding this or a different topic? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I just, it was a comment that, um, you know, maybe we could wait until we go through the, uh, get the, you know, tool designs presentation sort of final report and then decide what to allocate. So, and uh, I, I did want to also add that, you know, in addition to the other stuff we talked about, you know, in terms of match, they allow soft match uh, grants like this. So like staff time, building utilization, there are ways to get there without hard, hard cash that is, locally generated, but we'll still need to, I just want to, we still want to be careful with, given the amount of money we may want to chase, because we got a lot of projects, we just want to make sure we have enough local uh, funding or soft match, like staff or whatever that we can use to make sure we can actually meet the requirements. So that's all. Perfect. So um, Jimmy, I, Jimmy. I don't have anything to add. I think people covering it pretty well. Okay, so can we are we agreeing to move it to a different meeting? I think that waiting for the study to come out will give us a better sense of where we're at. And also, like by then, Mr. Kamali and Rocio could put something together of what it looks like um, with the money we have allocated. 
so that we have a better understanding of what streets and, and areas are going to be covered uh, with that funding. And also, like, if we are able to maximize it, you know, because the idea is put this out together and say, like, this is the work we're going after and send it out to try to get funding, correct? So I think let's put a little hold on it once we get the information in to figure out what it looks like. But once again, this is not, we cannot use this money to match um, the infrastructure bill. So that would be like if we want to go above like our budget and, and above um, what the infrastructure bill potentially could give us. Let's put in the universe that it will give us. Okay. All right. So, all right. So we got into agreement, wait for the study and then figure out in the meantime, Mr. Kamali can please ask Tom what the, what the yes. requirements are for unallocated. I think you basically might vote to unallocated then reallocated. It might be simple as that because what uh, our team will do is like report it. You know that this is like the change that, that got made. Um, after my understanding, at least from what we were told, is they not to reallocate funds after FY24, right? They're, um, they're highly, <laughs> at this point they have used the word, very highly recommend that it's, yeah. not, um, it's not because it might not be approved. Um, but that's that's what, a, you know, if they change their mind a little bit closer, it might be a thing, but aim at basically sticking to more or less what we have, and then they'll let us know. And Tom, I already know what the project, you know, what the requirements are after FY24 final, you know, the, the, uh, the stuff, because like we have said, you know, we're going to keep record down to the last penny and down to FY26. So that way, if they change their mind and they decide to audit us on what we spend our money on, we have it there. And that's the reason why. You know, we have asked, you know, Melissa to like number every meeting we have. We follow with the other document and we have voted like we have talked about it in the work session for the for the item and then bring it to a legislative for a vote. So that way we um, it shows that we've had enough um, open meetings also to um, to discuss this and, and give the opportunity for our stakeholders and our community to have a have a feeling about it. All right. So moving on to by co-op. And there was a request for $8,000. I think at this our recommendation that went down to three or four. Um, it, I, you know, can you, uh, one of you, I don't know if Jared, um, Luke or Mr. Kamali, whichever of you guys would like to raise your hand. Can you guys give us a summary of why is it that they asked for an increase? Because originally we were all, we, we were all thought that the extra asset money was because they needed repairs. But so far, between our ARPA funding, the, um, the carpenters doing um, work, and city funding, we have covered all the repairs, um, repairs, additions, and edits that the bike co-op is, is so, going to have. Uh -huh. So I want, Selena, I wanted to def defer to Mr. Kamali because they, uh, they submitted the um, budget request to, uh, to the city. Um, you know, given again, given the repair, the funding we've already supported, and then the um, uh, the unallocated funding they have, the funding they have yet to expend that is un, un, unspent. So, um, you know, and I'm comfortable with uh, dialing this down. I think you know, obviously, committees and groups are going to ask for an amount that you know is aspirational, and we need to balance that with the overall needs of the city and committees and other other activities. So, uh, Mr. Kamali, do you have any, you want to provide some uh, feedback on that? Yes. Uh, well, they're asking for operational support in this budget because they used to get some donation in the years before, and they used to have a lot of volunteers. And I believe that, you know, they don't get that much opportunity right now, and they were seeking $8,000 from the city. But when I look at the budget and the trend analysis from the years before, the cost that you know they have, that was the usual cost. But they're saying that they used to get a lot of you know donations. But the cost that I provided to you guys, it was around fifteen to seven hundred you know dollars per year. So I suggested to, or I recommended to go with you know three thousand dollars this year and see how it's going to apply to them. So, Mr. Kamali, can you clarify? Um... Can you clarify what you mean by they want operational support? 
Well, I believe that uh, they used to have some volunteer to work for them, and I'm not I'm not really that clear on that. But they hey. just put it in that email, and I just share it with you guys. They said, you know, this is this these are the reason that we don't have that opportunity this year, and the cost of everything has gone up due to the COVID nineteen. So they're requesting eight thousand dollars instead of sixty five hundred, which they had in the last budget. I think the I think it was a couple of things, uh, Jared. I think it was um, they put off some expenses that they normally would do over the last few years, which is why they claim they haven't really spent their line item. Um, and then the cost of those things, so just bike repair type stuff, is more expensive than what it has been in years past. So I think those are the two big contributing factors. And then the other one was. Um, the lack of lack of um, donations that they've been getting recently. Yeah, no, and I under, under, understand that. I just want to make sure, Mr. Kamali, that we're, you know, that that I, I guess we're uh, appropriately evalu evaluating what things they need. Well, there, there's what they want and what they need to continue operations. And I think you know we want to make sure to cover the needs, and you know we've sure, can always cover the wants. So. Okay, perfect. Valerie, I see your hand raised and then Luke. Um, yeah, thank you. And I think, um, I mean, having the bike co-op be a strong co-op for our community is a really good thing. Um, and so I am um, definitely supportive of their request. Um, and I think having them grow and build is not a bad thing given all the development and all the things that are happening along Route 1 corridor. Um, it's a great place to go for bike to work day. It's nice and sunny and it's on the way <laughs> north and south. I don't know, but it's good. It's a good place. I would definitely um, like to continue to support them. I think um, $8,000, you can allocate it. And if they don't use it, we can unallocate it, um, you know, um, in the next three months or something, you know. Okay. Um, Luke, I thought I saw your hand. Did it went down up or where are you? Yeah, I had, I had, it was, it was from, from earlier, but I am in support of the, of the allocation. Okay. Um, I would tell you guys that Mr. Kamali, I don't know if you're wrong, has this answer, the money that was allocated, because they're telling us that the money that I got allocated in the past few years did not got spent. Can you give us a clarity whether it not got spent or did it got spent and we went over? No, no. As I told you, and as I provided to mayor and council by email in FY twenty one, I think they spent seventeen twenty two seventeen hundred dollars, and FY twenty one fifteen, they have not gone over the sixty five hundred. Okay, but you said they spent only a thousand dollars, so they spend more. They spend the sixty five. No, they have not spent the 65. They mm -hmm. have spent 1500 or close to $2,000 so far since I've been here. So my question, I guess, would be like, why are they not making purchases this year to get ready for next year if they have about $5,000 left on the line item? Because they don't need it. And this year, as Luke mentioned, they're saying that to buy the parts for the replacement and repairs on the bikes, the inflation is high, the parts are expensive. But usually, as I mentioned it, you know, I think we could go with 3000 They're not going to, they don't need that much money because the history shows on the account. So I don't really know because I don't work directly with them, but I can look into it, ask them for more detail. But that was the information that I received last March from them. I can ask them again, but I don't think they need, you know, because they haven't spent the 6,500 in FY 22 or 23. So, and they've been spending less than $2,000 so far. So I didn't understand that from the email, and the email that they sent it to me was not that clear. I can follow up again. Yeah. If so, Mr. Kamali, to be clear, I'm in agreement with you. I think what I'm saying is like, you know, I agree with you when it comes to the amount. And I do feel like they could pre-order some stuff and buy them out of this budget because they still have about $5,000, if not $5,000 left out of this budget. 
so they in the next two months they could buy some parts that they could be delivered paid out of this year in order to utilize for next year. That, you, you that could be the case, Mayor, but I don't know yeah. why they're not using the opportunity. But we still have three more months, you know, two more months. Mm -hmm. They could be buying some other stuff in June or July or June or end of this month. Yeah. So I can reach out to them and let them know that if they need anything in July or August, they can use FY23 and purchase it in advance and we will approve it for them. Yeah, can you please like send a message sure. out to them, Mr. Kamai? Let them know, like, hey, this is how much money you have your budget. That. Is there something like to pre order? No, I'm sorry because I just, you know, I should have got more information on that. I'm sorry, but um, I definitely look into it. So, Consul, I'm kind of more leaning towards the 3000 that Mr. Kamali suggested because they still have 5000 in this year's budget. And I think it also will, um, will potentially encourage them to buy some pieces. Um, for next year that um, that they might need that they already for, for see coming that they need like if they need like um equipment to fix the bikes and stuff like that right so they could pre-order that i know that this year they um they receive a generous donation um you know and that, therefore we didn't have to buy the um, the repair um the bike repair um equipment that's in front of like not uh, not in front of the um, by co-op, which basically means mean that anytime the bike co-op is closed, people could stop by with their bike and repair their bike without the need of them being there as well, right? But that was a generous donation um, from from one of um one one of the real estate, actually one of the real estate agents slash um if you have their name, Jerry, let me know what it is right now. I blanked out. And I literally just saw him about like a few days ago. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, if we're not in agreement yet, we could move this to like the next next meeting, guys. It is 921 and I apologize. I had it to um I had it to move my child who fell asleep in the in the in my office with me. Um where are you guys with this? They do have uh, money for they still have over five thousand dollars for this year. So maybe um encourage them to spend some of the money to be able to, you know, to be to utilize. And we could always have this conversation next month. I'm I'm good with them encouraging to use the five thousand dollars they have before June thirtieth to buy some of that stuff, and then ask them how much they need if they if they use that funding thing. Okay. Thank you, Luke. Valerie. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I mean, it's eight thousand dollars for the bike co-op. I think we can we can allocate it next month if we have to. That's fine. <laughs> Jared, your mic is closed, Jared. I agree with I agree with that approach. Thanks, Jimmy. I'm fine. Okay, and just to remind you guys, it's not they haven't they haven't spent that line item, but we have put a lot of money towards the bike co-op um, in the last few years to get it into shape and including some money from you know, to do the windows, the roofing outside and repair whatever else was needed to. Mr. Kamali could put those numbers aside. So money has gone out to the bike co-op exceeding easily $8,000. So this is basically for items that we need to help the community. But um, if they could spend some of the money that they have in that line, it definitely will help. Um, and I believe every repair we needed to make and fix windows, roofing, everything else has been completed. Um, Mr. Kamali shaking his head yes. All right. So let's, um, so bike co-op and streets and sidewalk, we will have the street and sidewalks discussion once we get the, um, the net, the vision zero report, right? To figure out what it looks like and where we're going. And the bike co-op, uh, Mr. Kamali is going to send them an email and they know they have $5,000 this year or whatever sure. the remaining is in case they want to utilize some of the funding. Um, and then we could, um, we could figure out like what we want to do. Once they use the funding, they might just need like the three for, um, for next year because the other thing i want i do want to remind you guys based on the conversation we are down to the last few dollars of arpa so at this point we need to also make sure that we are very cautious in what we're spending because um 300 000 are gonna go very fast um even if it's half a million it's gonna go very fast we used to have a million when this conversation started this year okay all right so thank you guys um 
We have a comment from Facebook. May I request the funds from previous budget to amend the carryover to the fiscal year tier and didn't happen. They do need funding held off of purchase to prioritize large purchase and even funding and not for funding for supplies. There are repairs to be done. Please move to the next meeting uh, to understand the needs. The co-op city asset. Um, Tony, so since the last discussion, um, the windows have been fixed and the roofing has been taken place. So those repairs were all paid by city by city ARPA money, one or the other. Um, but um, yeah, those, those repairs are made and I think the council has decided to um, to move it to a different discussion. All right, okay, so we already voted on the items that we voted, the other ones we'll talk about it later. Okay, so moving on to first reading ordinance 06-23 budget amendment number three, the mayor and council will have the first reading. And the first reading, and not adoption, the first reading of ordinance 06-2023. We're not adopting today, so delete that word. Um, okay, all right, Melissa, do you have it on screen? Can you show me the complete document? Just scroll down. Oh, Jared's going to love reading this. Jared, make sure you get some water. All right, so you have in front of you the ordinance 06-2023 from the budget amendment number three. I'll read the, the first part while you get water and refresh. No, Authorizing the movement of funds in the fiscal year FY23 budget between line items. Go on, Jared. All yours. Whereas the city of Mount Rainier budget for fiscal year 2023 was adopted by ordinance number 4-2022 in May 2022. Whereas that has been deemed necessary to transfer funds between line items to meet current demand for goods and services. And now, now, therefore, be it ordained by the City of the Council of Mount Rainier, Maryland, that the following transfer of funds between appropriations shall be made to the fiscal year 2023 budget of the City of Mount Rainier. Revenue. Um, under heading uh, account 4720.31, Maryland safety cameras, safety street revenue amount $201,674. Uh, and account 4690, bond borrowing, $2 million. Total revenue, $2.2 million, oh, sorry, $2 million, $201,674. Um, expenses, an account 5899.31, Maryland Safety Camera Safe Streets Grant Expenditures, $201,674. Account 5701, Potts Hall Redevelopment, $2 million. Account 5520, interest code compliance vehicles, $135. Account 5521, principal code compliance vehicle, $6,558. Account five, uh, 5523, interest um, police lease, I think that's vehicles, $425. Account 5524, principal lease police vehicles, $21,005. Account 5522, interest public works trucks, $378. Account 5525, principal public works truck, $16,781. Uh, account 5598, contingency, um, it's a um, debit of $45,282 $45, for total expenses of $2,201,674. Okay. And on the bottom is basically the, the wording, this ordinance has been adopted and blah, blah, blah. Okay, the standard. All right, Council, um, you have heard a first reading from our Vice Mayor on ordinance 06-2022 budget amendment number three. Um, any, it's not a voting matter, it's just for us to hear it. We had decided to move some items from, remove them from FY24 and move them from FY move them to FY23. And that's what you guys have in front to pay uh, some of the debt early, right? Correct, Mr. Kamali? I'm hearing that's like correct, that yet. All right, so yes. this is what you have in front. So basically uh, our team cleaned up, went through the various line items of the budget in order to accumulate this money in front of us. Mr. Kamali, there's one item that I apologize I didn't add and I'm gonna have to add. Um, that was, um, the additional funding um, for uh, Nauticon for the program they're gonna uh, put it um, in our system. So that's uh, something I'm gonna have to need for us to add ideally out of this, um, to take it out of this year budget, okay? 
that was uh, uh, we were going to use the contingency uh, money because we have some money over there and the cost was only nine thousand dollars and I think there is no need to have a budget amendment on that. So can you add it to this so that we have sure. the record that it sure. was moved from from the contingency? Yes. So yes, that'd be the only thing I'll add it. So if you guys could add that, so that was ready for the second reading, um, okay. and that we could proceed with 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 that um with More that um, with that. Okay. All right. All right. So that's the only thing I'm amending to this one, and for the second reading, it will be um it will be available. Okay. Sure. Team? We'll do. Um. So, okay. Perfect. All right. So, console, we're good. All right, Sivari, thumbs up. Luke, thumbs up. Jared, thumbs up. Jimmy? You're good. All right, perfect. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I'm muting. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the next item. Oh, Luke, it's 930. Discussion and... Oh, you know, we need to do this one. Discussion and vote on awarding the contract of Memorial Park to Streetscape Project. The mayor and council will vote on recommendation of the city manager to award the contract to users construction for Memorial Park Streetscape Project. As a quick random, we put a bit out in all of the places that we needed to put. It was advertised. Six bits came back. We had a work session that stated who the bits were, how much there was. The city manager recommended um, you source. Uh, the council reached consensus uh, to move it to the agenda for us to vote. And um, we have seen you source work. They have actually worked in our Main Street project in Rhode Island. That's um, the people responsible for them. And we like how community focused and involved they are. All right. And so just to be clear, you know, that this was an open bid and it was answered. Now we're at the vote part. Okay. So council, can I have a motion on the floor to approve this? Uh, so, so moved. Second. You guys are... Okay, I'll make the motion then. Thank you, guys. Um, so, motion to award the contract for Memorial Park Street Project to users construction, user construction. Second. All right, so we probably moved and second. Any, oh, I'm going to open it up for discussion. Any discussion? Hearing none. Um, any objections? Abstentions? All right. Unanimously, 500. Zero, zero. Um, the contract for Memorial Park Streetscape project will be awarded to you source construction. Thank you so much. So, team, uh, you know, you have already been directed to like move forward with whatever documents, paper we needed. So, it's ready to go. All right. And uh, we look forward to seeing great projects. I know Luke is like crying sad tears. So, I know I'm going to, you don't understand. I feel like it's been in the agenda for five long excruciating year slash eternity. I'm going to be very happy when they break ground. Please let us know when they're breaking ground, Mr. Kamali. I think sure. I'm going to go over and we'll cry do. as that we'll happens. Do. Collectively, we'll look. All right. So perfect. Thank you so much. And congratulations to you, Source um, Construction, for being awarded um, the, the contract. All right. Item number 13, vote on approval of minutes. It's a five-minute discussion. Mayor and Council will vote on approval of the minutes for March 21st, 2023, special legislation meeting, public hearing, and work session. March 25th, 2023, public hearing and work session. April 4th, 2023, legislative meeting. Can uh, Melissa, did anybody send any changes to the minutes? No, Mayor. All right, so the minutes are standing. Um, Melissa did present to us at a work session. So they have been, you guys have had at least seven to 14 days to review them. Um, if we're good with the minutes, can I have a motion on the floor to approve? I move to approve the minutes. Second. It's been probably moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing uh, none, any objections? Abstentions? All right, this, um, the vote, the minutes um, for March 21st, March 25th, and April 4th have been approved. Thank you, Melissa. All right, um, one last thing before we adjourn as an announcement um, to the community. Uh, the mayors, they had a meeting with Sheriff Carr. More information is going to be forward. I also put him in um, 
They're going to closely be collaborating with other municipal um, police departments. So that is something that they're going to work on. Also uh, making sure that information is being sent from their office. The LAYC had their big event. Um, uh, thank you to uh, Council Member uh, Juanica Fisher for the invitation. I was able to um, attend and celebrate with um, various community members. Um, let me see. Thank you to the fire uh, department um, uh, for inviting us, for, for inviting uh, the various um, very various mayors and to um, to a training last Friday. Uh, next year, I think I'm going to take one of you guys with me, <laughs> Council, uh, to go to this training. It was a full day training from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on how to do fire rescue and everything they have to endure. We'll be sharing those pictures. Um, and we got to meet at the um, training center in College Park. It was definitely very um, exciting, hard work and big, um, big, big, Big thank you to the fire department for all the work that they do and how great they work also with our police department. It's the equipment is ridiculously heavy. I'm still I'm still um feeling um the the pain of the air pack in my back because we had to go into a, a secure a secure building where they train and set fire so that way we know how it feels and visibility and everything else. So in saying that next year um they're gonna have another one. So council, I need to know which of you guys would like to go. I find. All right. So, in say, um, I would like to have a motion to adjourn. Disappointed. For some privilege, Mayor. Go ahead, uh, Jimmy. Just, I won't be at the next meeting. So, good luck, everybody. And, you know, good luck. That's all. Take care, everybody. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jimmy. So, you're not going to be at the soaring in? No, I'm, I'm taking Jody up at the airport. So, okay. All right, thank you, thank Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks. Thank you for your service, Jimmy. Really, whatever. So, Good. since we're not going to be able to thank you, I guess I'm going to give the floor to you guys to say something. Okay, I guess. We'll no, I, I, I'm fine. Just <laughs> it's nine thirty six at night. The, the best thank you we could do to me is to say let's adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adjourn. Okay, thank motion to adjourn. We probably moved and second. Any discussion? All right, thank you so. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, thank you guys so much. This meeting has come to an end at 9.36 p.m. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. And thank you to the whole staff for, for staying. And, and big thank you as, again to Board of Elections and the whole entire team that stayed. I know Kamali was there. Melissa was there. I believe Jared was also there. Uh, they stayed pretty now until the last vote is counted, but also like they were secure and in place. Um, the board of election was doing a final council. Um, I believe it, uh, by tomorrow they should have the final um, official count and it's going to be posted all over social media. So thank you once again for those that run. Please continue to be um, engaged, you know. All right. Have a good night and um, I'll see you guys soon. Please make sure you're there at 7 a.m. <clears throat> for walk and roll and bike to school. You know, I'm sure the PTOs will be happy to see you. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Jimmy, Jimmy, thank you so much and we're going to miss you. Thank you.